This week, Drew Nelson and I review what we have been smoking with the Sticks of the Week in the Cigar News. Premium cigars receive historic release release, <laughs> and relief from FDA regulations. Stogie Geeks, you might want to take down my email, joeh at stogiegeeks.com, or follow me on Twitter. We're releasing a deal that's a 20 cigar sampler for just $69.99 delivered to your door, free shipping. You want to stick around for that? And if you add some more stuff, it's still free shipping. There you go. It's an exclusive deal for Stogie Geeks. We are definitely going to talk about the uh, historic relief from the FDA regulations. Intertwine that with what we've been smoking. We have the little doc here from Texas, and we have Nelson here in studio. So pay attention, cigar news and stuff you might need to know right here on episode 338 of Stogie Geeks. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to episode 338 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. Privilege and an honor to be here. Got a super awesome show lineup today. Uh, I have to my right is Nelson, who has uh, making a Stogie Geeks episode appearance. He was helping me with the Yagua un- unboxing and unveiling for that. And Nelson, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. What's up, Stogie Geeks? Put that boom a little closer to your mouth. There you go. And then we have a remote. The ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to the little doc head from Texas, Mr. Drew Galvin. <laughs> What's happening, fellas? Nelson, great to meet you. Nice to meet you, uh, Drew. S- thank you for filling in for me, uh, I think, a time or two Well, in, uh, in the last few weeks. But, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Man, a lot of news out there today in the cigar. Well, not today, but this past week in the cigar industry. So uh, we're going to talk about a few of those things, uh, the FDA ruling especially. Uh, Cigar Fest, I got a lot of friends that are disappointed that that's also been canceled Mm -hmm. uh, due to the fires uh, restrictions. And, of course, a lot of the uh, big smoke and things like that that are supposed to happen later in the fall, those things have also have been nixed. So here we are. Smoke at home. Yeah, that's kind of to be expected, I think. You know, it's like. It's like, you know, I mean, you, uh, with with COVID on the scene and it's going to remain on the scene, you know, uh, the, when you have, you know, it's one thing to have like a barbecue at your house and have 10 people and use some hand sanitizer and sit around a fire pit. And, you know, if you have a drink in both hands, you don't put your hands on your face. So that's a good idea. 
right? That's what I've been doing when I go to family barbecues and stuff like that. If you have a drink in each hand, then you don't have to worry about coronavirus because you, you, can't, good get, you can't touch there. And then, you yeah. know, I mean, but that's massive amount of people from various different locations flock into one destination. I mean, we, we've seen that in the cybersecurity field for sure. Uh, where conferences have just been camp- uh, canceled, and it's just airing on the airing on the side of caution, and you know yeah. you, you don't you don't need any outbreaks and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't but, think uh, people were surprised by this at all. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised by this at all. What they're more surprised about is how the FDA came down oh, yeah. um, with that, and uh, Drew, Drew's going to get into that uh, and and kind of kick off that conversation in a bit. Um, all I gotta say is I was right. In tw- I was right. I was right. I was right. I was right. Try not to make it all about me, but I was right. And and, and in 2014, in 2014, I said on Cigar Club Radio that there is no way this is gonna go down. And then I said semicolon, if it does. With the two hundred fifty thousand dollar buy-in and the two hundred fifty lots that people do, usually they do a, 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 a batch of new cigars comes out from a company. They do a hundred thousand sticks, then it gets going in the first run. Even though it's like a test run, right? You 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 do a two thousand uh, fifty batch, right? And then second batch is usually where the us boutique chases kind of go. Oh, I'll go to the first one, but anyway, that's another episode for another time. All they're gonna do is pass on what the way we do to the consumer. It's just like if you have tariffs in the car industry or anything like that. So we would pay 70 cents more a stick. And quite frankly, we, I've said this over and over and over that either one or two things are going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? Or right. Uh, and then countless, ep- countless interviews on both sides. Here at Story Geeks, oh Joe, you don't understand how the industry works. You, you, you know, my 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 favorite one is you know you don't understand you know how, how this is all going to come together. The government can do what it wants. Yeah, we have checks and balances. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it, it's the same thing when it comes to presidential discussion. You, we have checks and balances, uh, except in state of emergency. And, and that's why you have governors doing their own thing with the executive order and people are going crazy because you have an executive order. But here in New England, if you have a snowstorm and the governor says, hey, you got to stay home by 5 o'clock, she's a hero here in New England, right? Oh, she's keeping everybody safe. If she's telling people to be safe for COVID, whether you think, you know, there, I mean, she, she's doing, you can't blame people for, for, for doing their job. But in regards to the FDA, uh, there, there was just no way that, that, that this was going to fly. There's just no way. And everyone has told me. Previous hosts on this show have told me uh, I have no clue. Uh, you don't, I don't understand. And it's just crazy. So yesterday um, was uh, to, for me to celebrate. I, I, I've been smoking Cubans ever since. Except for just now. <laughs> I got this little uh, black label morphine thing going on. So yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, want to talk about that. Want to talk about Sticks of the Week. Um, today's stick of the week is the La Unica number 400 natural that is with JC Newman. So we are going to take some time and talk about that. Drew has some sticks. Nelson has some sticks and stories. I'm sure Drew has some stories and, um, Drew, when you sent me your sticks, it's crazy. Those were on my next to do, uh, type of sticks that, that I've had. So that's nice. scary <clears throat> that we're even on a stick of the week wavelength because for those of you watching and listening as you know uh show prep is at a minimal when it comes to here because we like to sit down and chat and um if you can't talk about uh uh, something you love for an hour then you can't be a host so that's the way that goes so anyway uh i am gonna let the little dark hair kid from texas go first drew you can talk about a stick you can talk about fda whatever one you want well you know the fda uh for sure you know i was as soon as that came out and rolled out, and I went immediately to the last two pages because that's where, for me, the the the, the juicy of uh, the juiciness of the decision is. Uh, I'm scrolling down there now because it's 38 pages. The document's 38 pages. Uh, you know, if anybody has read court documents, man, it it can be very cumbersome. That's why so lawyers they, charge a lot of money so that they can produce fancy documents. If Stogie Geeks, oh yeah. if you want the court documents, you can either email Drew at StogieGeeks.com or Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, and we'll attach it in a PDF, and you can read 38 pages of uh, 
legalese. <laughs> Legal <laughs> FDA regulation stuff. There you go. Right. I was going to read it for the whole show, but, you know, uh, that'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, page 37, the conclusion and order yeah, let's do uh, that. for me. Yeah, the conclusion and order for me wrap, wrapped up pretty much what was been said and how, and what you've been touting the last, since 2014. And I'll say this, you did say by 2023 or 2024 is when we'll have some traction on this. And it looks like right as of now, it's been, it's, we're looking at 2023. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, probably at even at that point, is that going to be an election year? If it is, it's it's going to push back even further than that. And I'm not saying. Yeah. 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 24. Yeah. So 24 will we'll, we'll be an election year. Um, yeah. So. So there you go. Uh, so count one or, or the uh, not count one. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> Jesus. We're not. Here we go. Who got arrested? <laughs> right. Yeah. So the conclusion in order goes from one to five. Uh, they talk about the FDA's refusal to adjust the 2007 grandfather date for cigars and pipe tobacco products. And they call it count one in parentheses was not arbitrary or I can't even say this word. Capri. Cap. Capri Caprius. So that's a legal terminology that I nice. I'm going to butcher up. Uh, two plaintiffs are not have not shown that the 2016 effective date was premised on legal error. So that was count number eight. Uh, three, the FDA eminent enforcement of the sub substantial equivalence uh, process against the cigar and pipe tobacco without finalizing. Implementation rules count uh, six does not render the final deeming uh, rule arbitrary uh, or contrary to law. So uh, the next two, pretty much the same thing. The FDA's cost benefit analysis was reasonably in it and reasonable and reasonably explained to the extent it is reviewable uh, at, at, at this juncture. Uh, and then, of course, number five, the, the FDA arbitrarily failed to address commentators' suggestions that the FDA create a streamlined substantial equivalence process for premium cigars, uh, which is count 14. So based on that, the court therefore recommends that the final uh, deeming rule to the FDA to consider developing a streamlined substantial equivalence process for premium cigars. Uh, the court further uh, enjoins the FDA from enforcing the pre-market review requirements against premium cigars and those products are defined in the 20, August 2020 notice until the agency has completed its review no later than August 31st, 2020. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, pretty much, as you said, Joe, back in tw starting in 2014, this can was going to get kicked down a road numerous times. Sure. And it has. Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, when they gave the definition of a premium cigar, that's what really gave it away for me. Right? Um, and the definition that they came up with um, is that a cigar is wrapped in whole tobacco leaf, contains 100% leaf tobacco binder, Contains at least 50% of the filler by weight, long filler tobacco or short, i.e. Uh, whole tobacco leaves that have run through the length of the cigar. They're given um, examples for people yes. who might not know the actual process. Uh, that is handmade. That is handmade or hand rolled. No machinery was popped. Apart from simple tools such as scissors to cut the tobacco prior to rolling, that that part I'm shocked about. That's why I'm spending a little bit of time on there because this FDA exemption also includes machine-made cigars, and I can tell you on the, when I had my stint on Cigar Club Radio, we were by law, radio law, not to talk about machine-rolled cigars ever. Because that was put in radio regulation as because it was machine process, it was lumped into cigarettes. And I know radio is an oh, old. Wow. So when I did Cigar Club Radio and, for example, Villiga came on, right? Mm -hmm. Villiga makes a boatload of machine-made stuff, right? Right. Uh, and we shied away from that. 
and talked about some of the premium stuff and then did that there. And we had enough of a story to to fill a show and do that there. But that was kind of like the outskirt around. And then after I took the quick legal test to make sure that I was able to host it, talking about tobacco, you technically can't talk about tobacco on the radio. But yet it had a cigar show. All right. So it was more lifestyle and concept and brands and 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 tell me your story. See where this is going from a story geek's host perspective. Lifestyle loophole. Right? It's yeah. a it's a lifestyle loophole. And then we were able to 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 get it on. That's why I was shocked at this point because in the original definition of a cigar, they were excluding machine rolled, and somehow mm-hmm. um, they included it then. So that's a really big victory for the premium cigar industry not saying that you know a lot of people are going to get into machine rolled but m- machine rolled cigars do have their purpose you know i mean i don't know about you story geeks but i have certainly have had some villa gachicos and some freaking al capones and you know you know like uh, like the knock around five minute smoke especially when i go to conferences right you go to a security conference i can't be like okay i'm thinking two hours of break i'm gonna have a th- have, right. a, have a freaking cigar but there are some times I'm like, shit, man, I ain't really need a cigar, right? So you just do that there. Um, so that's kind of a big uh, victory there. And then another point I want to get is that um, uh, it does not have a character characterization. Oh, I'm sorry. It does not have a characterizing flavor other than tobacco. Yeah. So. So what does that mean for infused? Right. 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 Now, I would imagine... Just someone who chickened out of Suffolk law. Sorry, mom. Right? Chickened out of <laughs> Suffolk law. I would imagine that the flavor, the, I'm sorry, infused process would be now governed at the state level. Possibly. It's already done in Massachusetts. But, but that was the whole problem with all this, right? It wasn't clear. That was part of what they were arguing was yep. that they came up with right. this and that there was no clear definition of what the testing was what parameters they had to work with um, that was the challenge and i think that was one of the main arguments they had with this i was actually excited about it for a different reason because while it's also obviously fantastic for the makers right for all the brands but me as a consumer now i don't have to worry about my sticks getting jacked up in price because obviously that cost is going to get passed on to us uh, as far as you know, the testing and and all the pre-approval things that the FDA is going to require. So, I was stoked when I heard that this news. It was fantastic news for the industry, for customers, for the brands. It's fantastic. I I, I second that. As soon as I found that out, I was like, okay, great, because now now we're gonna start seeing another version of the creativity boom, especially right. with COVID. Like, especially with COVID. Like, if they can get past the factories and make sure the factory workers are safe and get things up and running. I know there's some back order issues going on on a ton of companies now, which is what I said, right? It's what I said in March. If you go back to Story Geek saying, okay, most of these things are sitting in a warehouse. We're not going to start yeah. seeing inventory problems till like, October, November if you follow the bouncing ball. Except for the warehouse that got stolen. Did you hear about that story, Drew? That's another story. That's an obvious story. Anyway, no, but you're right. So, <laughs> it was a local warehouse that got stolen, right? I mean, I'm I'm actually a, a casualty of COVID, right? I don't, shouldn't call it a casualty, but I got into sticks and stogies because of COVID, mm. right? I picked up this hobby and and I became a geek, if you will, about it, right? And you know, if you read, there's lots of studies going on just in the last two to three months around how COVID has actually helped the cigar industry. Um, and yeah. turned a lot of people now in, into cigar lovers. So it's 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 really fantastic. Yeah, wow. everybody's had the time to 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 actually sit down and and take a break uh, with this COVID and really develop you know develop uh, develop uh, develop their uh, their hobby, whatever that may be. And cigar, you know, the cigar industry has definitely uh, taken is uh, is one of the top industries in that. As a matter of fact, I think that was in a Forbes magazine. Uh, they were doing a uh, just just kind of asking people uh, a survey, you know what, and and and, and cigars were were, out, were there at the top. So mm-hmm. yeah, pretty 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 cool. So, I think a lot of wives aren't happy, but well, yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> they never. <laughs> I almost got in trouble right now. I almost said they never are. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, with that with liquor. I mean, that was the other thing. Spirits. Excuse me. Yep. Let me not call it liquor. Spirits. So yeah, spirits was the other category that a lot of people have really enhanced their knowledge. And a lot of the YouTubers and um, a lot of the blogs or vlogs uh, have really seen a, 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 a an up tick in their in their uh, viewership uh or subscriptions uh for those uh particular um um blogs i think so uh, because i mean here in the northeast you know or you back over in texas drew right it reminds right? me of like if there yeah. was a hurricane or a massive tropical storm or a tornado in your in your area of the woods or us for a snowstorm right we're we're trained to hunker down covid yeah. is just like a freaking nine month snowstorm that we can't you know what i mean that we have to have like a kind of restrictions and social activities when it snows out it's typical when it snows like crazy crazy like it's warm it's warm you know what i mean it's 32 degrees it snows fluffy you know what i mean it's not like ice ice cold here in the northeast if it's freaking 10 degrees and it snows that's great because it's thin snow yeah, that's a, actually a yeah. great analogy it's a, fl- it's a fluffy snow so you go outside you smoke a cigar so it's like a giant let me enjoy. So if you have a snow day and, and you're a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad or you're, stay, you're forced to stay at home, you, you're going to partake in your, hab, your hobby. I mean, snow days, I mean, pre my son, snow days were like, yo, we're doing some Bloody Mary. We're frying up some eggs in the bacon. We're throwing the bacon yeah. in the Bloody Mary. We're just eating like all day. Right. <laughs> yeah. For those in New England that remember uh, the blizzard of 78, it's like the blizzard of, blizzard of 78, but for like six months. Sure. Right. Sure. Well, well for, for us here in the Northeast, absolutely. You know, and, and, uh, um, Story Geeks, if you're interested in having a breakdown of this, uh, we can send you the email, but, uh, I have, uh, two attorneys that are willing to come on the show and break down all 38 pages. I might do that separately with you drew and then just post it on our website because i don't yeah. think that that would be a very popular episode <laughs> you know what i mean but i think that you know from a knowledge standpoint and where story geek stands we just can't i just can't stand here and say i told you so i told you so and kick and scream well without backing it up that's me yeah. right yep. and so I'm going to do an episode with uh, a, a couple of attorneys to break down all the language, to break that down, and then do that there. Yeah. One of them, and, and the good news is it'll actually be a diverse panel because one of them doesn't smoke, and one of them is, is, is a smoker so of premium cigars. So uh, we can nice. kind of get two points of view That's and then do yeah. that, Drew. So yeah, we're, we're going to have to do that like on a weekend or something like that uh there because like i said uh, turning that into an episode will be like going to court yourself i don't know if you ever so, have any attorney friends but it's like okay i get it bro like can we move on so let me let me pose this question now so now that this 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 ruling has come down from the fda now i want to know is what is everybody in our industry all the players what are we going to do to gear up and not just sit back on this cushion of two years and just kind of like let's 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 just see where the next where, where it goes next, because that to me is where is what got us in this position in the first place is that a lot of people in the circuit. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we're not, they're not doing enough, mm-hmm. but I want to know as a consumer, if I was on a consumer level, what are you what are you doing and what you know we already know what we can do. We can go ahead and write our senators or our congressmen in our states and push forward those letters because that's that's the thing now that you, you know that cigar rights of america and all those other uh, uh pca and all, everybody else is gonna get on now but now it's time to hunker down get get the legal you know the legal ramifications set up so that we the cigar industry go in prepared and not and not just let these uh you know naysayers you know develop you know what? What we're gonna do? You know, uh, on the FDA side. No, so, you're right. Well, Be- what is? What is it? Uh, I, I'm I'm trying to follow the question. Are you no, asking no, what the he's industry- absolutely right. Like they need. I think what you're saying, Drew, is they have to seize this opportunity, right? Organizations yes. like the CRA and other organizations like them, they need to right. jump on this and do more to prepare. So because this isn't gonna, this isn't going to die, right? I, and I think you're agreeing with that, Drew. Yes. They, they need yes. to be prepared. That that's what he's saying is. And I agree. I agree 100%. The industry needs to seize this opportunity, get their crap together, and really be prepared to fight this and anticipate what the FDA is going to come back with. Right. Exactly. Mm. 
So I think what, we're going yeah. to see a couple of agencies and and factories that have invested uh, invested st- stake and companies that are U.S. based um, mm-hmm. create something uh, probably entirely new because right. we've proven through the industry that some agencies might have not been as organized as we sh- should be. And, or some agencies, in my opinion, writing a letter to your congressman and doing that, I've been on the receiving end of those letters and had the opportunity to work for the United States House of Representatives back in 1997 through 1999, and yeah. I, 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 they, they, don't, they don't see those. Well, that's what I'm saying. They, that, they don't, like, not... like if you're tweeting. That helps. If you're tweeting. It only helps for the chief of staff, and I'm going to tell you why. Because in, that, in my day and age, there was no Twitter, Facebook, you know, all that stuff. There was no social media. Right. right. It was only available for Facebook if you were in college, right? No, I didn't even think it was around then, right? No, 90. No, no, no it wasn't. Right? MySpace. It was MySpace. So, yeah, MySpace, <laughs> right? It only MySpace. works for the chief of staff. Because what happens is each letters come in and the chief of staff keeps a number. So if there's 30 numbers about this bridge happening in this little town and doing that there, and the congressman has, or woman has to get involved, the chief of staff says, hey, listen, we've gotten this letter from this organization. Okay, first question comes up. How many members do they have? Chamber of Commerce. Any local Chamber of Commerce here in New England averages three to 500 members, right? They say 300 members. How many did we get? 30. Okay. It's moot. It's moot. No matter what the issue is. Right? No matter what the issue is. Now, if there's 300 members and you have 100, now you have one third of the organization saying, yo, this is this, whatever the, this item is. That's where the chief of staff turns around, has a meeting with the congressman or woman, and says, we need to consider this on, on an agenda. And oh, by the way, the meeting is here. Then you check with the scheduler, find out if they're in D.C., or local state, and they're figuring out and see if they're going to be there to actually do that. Yeah, but that's so, where Drew brings up a good point, right? Because it's, it's, the CRA is huge, mm-hmm. right? So it's way more than 100 members. Yep. Um, and Drew, I don't know if you know any. I know there are others that fought in this particular case. I know the CRA was was one of the front runners, but there were other organizations that I assume are you know bigger than a hundred. Yep. Um, so I, I think people helps, but those organizations th- those are the power. That's the engine that's going to drive how this is going to be worked out in the future if the FDA comes back again. Yep. Well, the FDA will come back and then. Oh yeah, they're but, not going to drop it. But it's actually a victory for for the premium cigar industry because we now have are not clustered in OT. Yeah, OTB. other tobacco products. Right, where yep. where premium cigar industry, which at the moment includes some machine made stuff, infuses is 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 is, is I think it's going to be done at the uh, state level there, and now we can begin as consumers to see an influx of creativity, if economically. Now keep in mind we're in the middle of COVID, right? If economically they can get the distribution things going and people safely working in the factory, right, to create with the demand, because remember, COVID, higher demand, right, of the product, right, uh, and get those factors there, I think we're going to see an influx of creativity. If the barrier to entry to get into the business and produce your own brand is kept at an even keel. Who knows? Out of this, the barrier to entry may go up in regards to uh, start your own cigar um, line, if the barrier goes up, you have less and less brands to, to come into the barrier of entry. From the no, business. but you know, you bring up a good point. I hadn't even thought of that, and maybe COVID's part of this too, but because of this uh, FDA case that was going on, were there brands or new brands, to your point, mm-hmm. that held back awaiting to see what the outcome was going to be of this case? I sure, think sure. there were because uh, historically here on Stogie Geeks around uh, IPCPR or PCA, whatever you want to call it, we've always done or I've always done since I was here, uh, uh, what am I excited for, right? It's a kind of like a calendar thing for Stogie Geeks. So what am I excited for to see? Who do I think is going to come up with new brands, right? Because they all kind of kept it hush-hush unless we were a freaking half-wheel or, or, or cigar aficionado, right. which is fine, right? 
Um, you know, but they kept a hush hush and they go to IPCPR. And when I got the list of new people, right? 2018 was big. 2019 was 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 a little bit smaller. 2017 was big. You know what I mean? So I would imagine that the influx of new stuff. It's not like they got stuff waiting, but they all have stuff waiting. If they're a smart brand line, they all have things waiting. We you know you know here at Security Weekly, we have products that are not available yet that we're going into 2021 with that we're not able to discuss on any network show even stogie geeks right but we have new products coming out and we're starting to line up those, those people now for a relaunch of 2021 right covid has made two things business wise okay it's made business flat or down for various reasons right or it's pushed agendas forward or back depending on where what you do where you are in the market what you sell where you are so so i i've i i've been um, experiencing from, you know, keep in mind in the cybersecurity field, like things happen a little bit more quicker, right? Because you're getting seed money and then, and then boosting it out. It's different as opposed to going out and selling and building a business, right? So what will happen is like COVID has pushed a lot of super cool mergers of companies and COVID has pushed a lot of super cool products that have come out because you're sending these developers home and doing all that out there. And what's going to happen? They're going to work. They're going to create new stuff. Right. I would imagine that if you're home quarantined in your version of a factory, you know that Nesta Placencia has stuff in the works for either Placencia or for the other stuff that he does. They have stuff and blends that they can do. And I think now right. it's like, oh, we're waiting for that. Let's move. And we're going to see a good influx. No, that's, you know, that's really interesting you say that because I, I was just thinking, you know, Joe knows I'm a big boutique guy. And... You mentioned about pushing agendas forward and some maybe held back. And there's definitely some of the boutiques have pushed their agenda forward. They didn't wait for the big co conferences or conventions. They came out with their lines. You know, I'm thinking of uh, like Stolen Throne. I'm a big fan of. They just came out with a new line of cigars and they, they didn't wait. They just they put it out there because people right. want it. They don't want to wait. You know, these conventions are getting canceled. They don't know what to do. So they just put them out. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, it's risky, but... They are, to your point, again, that's just an example of them pushing that agenda forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, that's just my experience in business from, from what I've seen. And then if I were to peel back that cybersecurity umbrella and go locally, same thing, right? Restaurants are either flat or down, right? Yeah. There's no restaurant saying, you know, except for restaurants that survive on takeout, Right. And, and, I'm, and I'm not picking on a specific industry. I'm going to give an example. Like Chinese restaurants do phenomenal takeout, right? So COVID might have made numbers go up. I know cigar companies, cigar shops, brick and mortar here in, in, in the Northeast are doing very well. They're, they're, they're not flat or down. You know, but a lot of that talks to what we began the show with, with, with people in, more people engaging in their hobby or increasing their hobby or have more time for their hobby. Uh, there you go. So, yeah, it's super cool uh, discussions that are going to come out of this for sure. Um, maybe we can talk FDA for the next couple of shows, Drew. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just different snippets. Yeah. We'll, we'll go yeah, through no. these 38 pages off air yeah. and take different snippets and, 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 and break it down Yeah, uh, yeah there cause as well. Because the, the other part of this, too, is just educating the consumer and having them understand uh, the Vidal, the Vidal, the validity of their uh, participation in this as well. But like I said, for, for the organizations that a lot of the cigar industries uh, support, you know, we really need them to, to, to take this uh, along with those groups <clears throat> and just really hyper focus for the next few years. And maybe, and maybe at that point, just develop their own internal, uh, you know, process for the FDA to adapt uh and, and 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 be fair about the whole situation you know with with all the legalese behind it and and all the experts and things of that nature there's no reason why we can't get into this now as a whole and and then just kind of move that agenda uh and and, not, and i'm not saying to be unfair i'm just saying to be fair right and so that we guide them and their thought process and how things are at transitioning from product growth uh you know, product uh, being manufactured all the way to the, the POS, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, 
so to me, I, that's where I'm at uh, with that. Uh, but yeah, like you said, we can definitely dissect this in all kinds of different ways in the next few episodes. Yep. Uh, but like I said, I think for everybody, uh, you know, get educated, be an, understand this. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, you asked me to do this ten years ago. I ain't got I ain't got time for that shit. <laughs> I'm fifty now. I'm above fifty. I'm actually fifty plus. I got time now. <laughs> right. right. For some yeah, I got time. I care. I'm passionate just like everybody else in the industry. But now I really want to help and be part of the solution uh, by bringing to the table, uh, you know, as much as, uh, as much as we can. And with that, you know, bring, bring our audience with us as well, you know, because I, I think at this point, you know, other than the politics of it, um, I think we need to be heard. And just like with anything else, if you have the second amendment, um, you know, guns and what have you you know things of that nature so um but that's where that's that's where i would like to see that where these organizations get together and really harness the situ uh, harness everybody in and let's just have a, a brainstorm and and come to an agreement of what uh the next steps will be yeah. in a couple of years from now it's a big it's a big and and for me the consumer is kind of like a 50 50 split some of them don't sure. even care about i Left work yesterday, and there was an event next door, and I said, you know, they're like, they're like Jojo, did you hear about what happened with the, with the FDA and whatnot? I'm like, yeah, and like, you know, you, you guys, like, worry about that. And, like, you know, uh, we're like, you know, because I get their opinion. I've known them forever, and they're like, you know, like, like it's crazy how, like, the boutiques kind of really hopped on that. But, yeah. and I'm like, well, the boutiques really didn't. I mean, you know, you, you had Drew Newman. From J.C. Newman jumping all over that, and they got you know they got some sticks that have been around forever. You know what I mean? It's 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 really a this is not a correct definition, this is not a correct format, and we need to correct it. So hats off to everyone involved that has made that yes. happen. Story Geeks, if you want the um, actual legal document, email either Drew or myself, and we can get that over to you uh, for sure, for yeah. sure. And we'll continue talking as things develop. Uh, more and keep everyone posted on the FDA. Actually, this is the most time I've ever spent on this the topic. I've always tried to, you know, kind of ju ju just let it go. But obviously something that's going to be on every single podcast uh, in the uh, cigar smoking world. So Big news. Yeah. The, it, it, is, it is big news, uh, and it's yeah. super cool. And uh, I, my congratulations to everyone who had um, aided and helped and, and made it yeah. happen. And there, I wish there was a more unified approach, but – some things do take time, yeah. and maybe that's the lesson learned moving forward. So, okay, well, let's move forward. Let's do it. Let's do <laughs> Great it. Great segue. I say we let yeah. Nelson do the first stick because, uh, well, they, you know, we got to break them in. You know what I mean? Well, well, well real Pop quick, what I, wanted, what I wanted to get in with everybody real quick was Nat Sherman International. So that 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 was uh, – they're closing by the end of September. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean that's 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 I know that's been news what for three weeks now. Sure. So just wanted to just wanted to get your take on that. I mean I I, I like a lot of the Knight Sherman uh, profiles. Uh, is there any is anybody hurt anything? Is are they being absorbed by somebody else? Or are they just are they just closing shop? Here's what I've heard. Thing? Everything's been uh, it's been for sale since October. Okay. Of last year, and uh, they're gonna get. Stop the uh, brick and mortar location, yeah. and the blends are going to sit there. And in my opinion, business wise, something will come out of it. Okay. Because maybe, because maybe the assets of the business. I mean, this is a business conference. This is a whole episode, right? Like, right. May, maybe the assets of the business don't warrant what the purchase price was. Right. So maybe it's worth letting it dissolve. Because what, what do you want? Do you want the brick and mortar or do you want the sticks? Right. I'm probably going to go I'll take the sticks. with right. sticks, right? Because yeah. you, right? you have resale yeah. value of a product, right? So if, you, if, 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 big if, the purchase price included the brick and mortar and you got to do it and, and, and however the, 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 the deal was, was going to be sold, right. at the end of the day, you want the sticks. Oh, it could be a hybrid too, because real estate is huge, right? So yeah, it could be a hybrid. 
You know, or there could have been I'll too have to- many. Could have been too many laws. It's it's like how they dismantled cigar shops in Boston. Right? right? You know, ooh, they had cigar masses in Boston. It was great. And, oh, wow, there's one in Providence when it first came. And, you know, it's a secondary Boston. And, and Bo- you know what Boston did to deal with the other side that doesn't like it? We only gave them a 10-year lease. In 10 years, they got to go. And they go, <laughs> oh, okay. And now it's an AT&T store in downtown Boston. Right? But, no, that, that, <laughs> that, that's the business deal. Right. You had yeah. a 10-year lease to perform your thing. Right? So what if someone else is there, a buyer in there? What if the people who are trying to create a deal know that someone else is interested in the property, and the properties can't be cheap, but you can get the sticks for a lot cheaper for sitting in a warehouse, right? And then doing that there, and then, and then, and then figuring that out. So I, I, my personal feeling is the Nat Sherman brand's sticks are not going to go away. Somebody will keep that alive and get it at a super cool price if they can be patient but they'd have to be in talks now right well again it depends it depends on the deal because all all, most of those sticks are predicated i know it doesn't matter but they're predicated and they have a track record of sales what are they at could they get it or now could they okay we dissolve the real estate thing go there there, and they get the sticks and then somebody picks them up i mean uh, crazy prediction What's today's day? August 21st, 2020. Do not be surprised if my father buys them. That's the prediction. That's my prediction. My father's. Yep, why not? They did it with Fonseca. You heard it today. No, no, if they did it with Fonseca, it's now Fonseca by my father. Why not? Yeah. Why, why, why not? If, 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 or, or something like that. Like someone, if they were smart, they would hold on to the history and heritage and brand recognition of a hundred change year old company, a t- uh, countless of loyal consumers, and all everything that's in there. I'm trying to rush this through, not because I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I was not prepared to talk about this today, right? But I'm good, <laughs> but I'm totally cool with it. I mean, we can talk about this for the remainder of the show in 86 sticks. I don't care, right? Um, <laughs> you know, um, just as long as we talk about the La Unica number 400 natural. Four and a half yeah. by fifty. Anyway, right? Just uh, I just wanted to. I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. That's so my, here's my some... thoughts. Here's my thoughts in a nutshell. Right? Um, the real estate portion was too much. Don't be surprised if those blends come out. Yeah. Okay. That's what. We'll, that's that's what I was thinking. It is a I was thinking that. Yeah, somebody else was going to absorb those blends for sure. I mean, they have a great. Or do you uh, want my history. prediction? Who's going to peel off the labels and resell them as their brand name? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's an option too right but how you know i'm, I'm trying to think of the number of the alpha uh, of the alpha in the alphabet like which number uh of their uh of the letter <laughs> I, but i kind of i kind of figured that out i would imagine that there's not one there's there's got to be a handful of people in the ish, in the industry who uh, already in talks to keep that going. Yeah, somebody some will point. pick it up, and I highly doubt. I'd be shocked if they changed the name because yeah. of that recognition and that history you just talked well, all about. All you got to do is say, blah, 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 your name. No, Nat Sherman, by right. blah, blah, blah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I was a little taken back by Fonseca going over with, 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 with life. It's different profiles, but right. it's more market share. It's all about market share. It's all about selling sticks, man. Well, plus you put two big names together. You you know, know. Name recognition is huge. Yeah. You go into a humidor, you're looking for that name. Drew, yeah. you want to call him and make him an offer? I already, <laughs> I've, I've already got my uh, forensics uh, accounting team already on it. All right, cool. Oh, yeah, because trust me, I was like, man, I'd like to be in on that if, if it's possible. But, hey, you know, all kidding aside, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nat Sherman is uh, not not. It's it's definitely got a rich history. What do you the, think, and what does Nelson think? What do you guys think? I I just yeah, I just said it. I mean, I yeah, really uh, think. I think. I didn't know if you were done. No, I think there are brands that are at least. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a prediction too. I'm guessing there's two or three brands that are already talking to them. Sure. And I don't think that they would change the name. I think it would be something like my. I'm just, I know I don't, I'm going with your prediction. It's my father. So it's my father's. At Net Sherman, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's how it would work. Yeah. I'll go bold. 
It's a New York. It's a New York establishment, so I'm thinking someone in New York will pick that up. Mm. One of the one of the one of the three. Maybe. So we'll see. All right, let's talk about stogies. Come on, let's get this show on the road. Nelson's first. <laughs> Nelson, you go. Oh, put me on the hot seat. Nelson, what have you been you, smoking? Well, this week I've smoked many. Ask my wife. Um, Nelson, what are you going to talk about on the show? <laughs> let me ask a better, let me ask a more pointed question. <laughs> can you be a little more specific? Uh, I think all of our wives can say that for sure. So one of my faves, <laughs> I, I did smoke one this week, the Alec Bradley Prinsado. Um, discovered okay. it a couple months ago. Fantastic stick. Um, I'm a big fan of the Robusto. It's a Honduran wrapper with a Nicaraguan binder, and then it's a combination Honduran-Nicaraguan filler. Um, it's a fantastic stick. It actually got a 96 um, cigar aficionado score back in, I think it was 2011, I want to say. Uh, nice, leathery, chocolate flavors and notes. Very, like, nice. Ra- I love, I'm a big fan of razor sharp burns. So it's got a nice razor sharp burn. So that's, that's what I've been smoking this week. Nice. Okay. Nice. Story Geek rating. What would you give it? Oh, okay. Do that's, you know the rating yes, system? Yes, I do. I okay. do. I do. I am. I am familiar. Okay. So this one, I would. Well, so I, I got to be honest. I, it's box worthy for me. There this is box worthy. Nice. I can agree with that. I like that stick as well. Uh, so you want me to go next, Joe, or yeah. what? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Because I don't agree so with gonna... that. But that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't agree> with <laughs> that. But well, I'm not going to tell you why. I probably, somebody, I've, uh, somebody get Joe another Bloody Mary. Let's see. If I got, I got yeah. a little bit of Bloody Mary. I'm on the Magic Hat and Bloody Mary. I'm like, I'm like ADD today. It's double know? fisted. There you go. So I, I actually, uh, I actually got some cigars from Syndicato, uh, and I haven't gone through all the profiles yet. But I got mm. some from uh, someone who's uh, close friends with uh, uh, James. Colucci. I'm going to pronounce his name as that. Uh, they're out of Baton Rouge, uh, Florida. So Syndicato, they have about seven uh, uh, seven or eight different uh, uh, cigars in their profile. Yep. So they have a large profile. I, I'd never heard of them. And so, uh, I mean, I've heard of them. I just never had any of their, any of their sticks. So I uh, got sent a little uh, I almost said the I almost said that, but I didn't say it. So here we go. I got a nice, I got a nice little package uh, from someone over there, and uh, so they sent me the Syndicato Particulares, Particulares, Particulares. Uh, so this cigar actually is out of the Aganorsa factory, six by fifty two Robusto, uh, triple. Uh, so it's not triple. Uh, it's a Nica. Pudo. I was going to say triple Nicaragua, but it's a Nica Pudo stick. So wrapper filler uh, binder uh, is. Oh, hold on. Hey, sorry. <laughs> nice. Was that your dog? My dog just took my uh, cigar cat line. No, my cat line. He got tangled up in the cat line. It was taking it outside the doggy door. <laughs> uh, nice. Oh my God, Tucker! Here we go, man. I knew that was going to happen. It's all good. My product, my production assistant. Anyhow, here we go. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a Nico Peru stick. Uh, priced point between seven eighty and eight ninety five. That's just coming from off of their website. Uh, it's offered in seven vitolas. Um, now, this, you know, this cigar. You know, I guess you know, I got the cigar and I got and I smoked uh, four of their uh, four, four of these sticks uh, of the same uh, uh, profile. Uh, it's a Nicado. So very consistent stick. Uh, you know, the taste notes, uh, you know, you get a really nice hint of coffee at the beginning. And then from there, it just starts to develop into a nice uh, spice. The spice uh, on this is not going to be a general baking, baking spice, but more like a, a little bit of the anise uh, spice. Uh, and then from there, it just starts to really mellow out a little bit and just cream and becomes really creamy. Uh, it's got some wood characteristics in there for sure. Uh, a little nuttiness, uh, probably more on the uh, peanut side, uh, where the creaminess was coming back. You know, took me back to the creamy section of that cigar, and then you get a lot, a lot of nice uh, earth uh, tones, uh, minerals, and things of that nature through there. Uh, towards the end of the stick, you start to get into a little bit of the sweet. Uh, uh, sweetness of it. So that right there, I'm going to put that more in the uh, um, 
like a like a cinnamon, like a little sweetness of a cinnamon hint, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then in and and in, 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 in a little bit of chocolate. So, uh, but yeah, this this cigar, I mean, it's uh, I, I had the six by fifty two robusto, uh, had it four different ways, and uh, and, and during the uh, during the uh, homework of the cigar, and uh, very consistent uh, uh, upper body, uh, upper medium on the body uh, flavor. Definitely uh, a lot of flavor there. There's a lot of other uh, flavors. I think that if you have a pretty in, uh, intense palate, uh, you'll be able to pick out other things there uh, more prominently. Uh, the complexity, uh, I'm going to give it a, a – out of a five, I'm going to give it a four in complexity. So the, it, it is definitely complex smoke. Uh, and then smoke volume, uh, it, it does uh, – it, it, it's very high on the smoke volume. So I'm going to say uh, on a scale of uh, – I'm going to say one to five. I'm going to give it a four and a half on the smoke volume. So it does smoke pretty, uh, pretty good. So uh, this stick here uh, for me, I gave it a fiver and that's not because uh, I'm saying that uh, the, you know, it's, it's a bad, it's anything bad with it. I, I just think if you haven't had anything in their profile, uh, from Syndicato, then definitely go there and check them out and grab a few of their different uh, profiles and see where, you know, where you're at to dial in where, what you would continuously put in a rotation uh, of your uh, humidor. So that's where I'm at with that. Mm. I've actually had one. Um, mm. You get from the, from the, from the Nicaraguan shade grown Criollo, you have yes. That's where your sweetness is coming from. It's got a little bit of spice for Nicaraguan binder and filler. I didn't find it as strong from mm-hmm. your classic Nika taste, like peppery at all. But no. um, my, but there is that spice. There it's is a spice. spice in it's there, but you know, I, I the sweetness you mentioned really comes up. Uh, in my opinion, it's in regular production, so yeah. it's not like you know sending uh. Uh, Stoy Geeks on a Wild Goose Chase. You're yeah. rocking an eight nine dollar price point plus whatever tax. You know what yeah. I mean? So he's, you're not going to break the bank. And um, one thing I did notice about this stick, from a construction standpoint, it's, it's it's it reminds me of it reminds me of like how a Lancero would feel. Yeah, loose. Just like the hand feel. Yeah, you know, you yeah. know how like you know how I'm smoking a Lancero sure. now. And it's kind of squishy. It's it's not yeah. packed tobacco, right. um, which makes the draw super easy. I bullet cut it and still got that massive amount of smoke that Drew was was talking about uh, there. Smoke. But yeah, I would agree with that fiver for sure. Yeah, yeah the smoke volume. Yeah, yeah. Even my wife was like, "Man, what are you what are you doing out there? What are you what are you smoking?" <laughs> So, uh, and she was talking about the barbecue. She thought Do you have mosquitoes was- in Texas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you keep the mosquitoes away. That's what I say. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, she thought I was smoking some uh, some ribs or some uh, some mm. uh, tri-tip or something. Yeah, it, <laughs> That's it, some good smoke. No, it gives <laughs> oh, away. Yeah. It gives away. I have a couple for you be- before you leave. You can check them out. But, yeah, so yeah. freaking it's, um, you know, they're, like I said, I, I, I like them. You know, Fiverr, I think, is, 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 is a good rating for them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, like I said, if you haven't had their sticks, uh, definitely try it because Affinity Hex and Casa Bella, I do have those as well mm-hmm. here, and so I'm going to get into those. In a, Did later. you have the uh, Cubico? I have not. No. The end is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> the end is where it's a super good stick, but but same nice. thing with the Particulares that I had. Um, yeah. I 100% agree with the way you 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 described it. The end is like it. Yeah. Like you know, not is. the very end, but when you get halfway through it, it kicks in. And I yeah. think honestly, the reason why it takes a while to kick in, it's because it's, it's loose. It's I use this in quotes. It's it's loosely wrapped. It's not a super tight wrap at all. Yeah, it's not. Jam-packed. It's not tight at all. It's not. It's not tight at all. But it. Uh, I would say. Uh, I would say it's got a medium firmness to it if but like you said it it does it is spongy or squishy i would use not, that stick for someone who says ah nicaraguans are too strong blah 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 yeah try it that's a good idea there you go there you go it's a great what's on idea. your list joe it's a great idea well 
I, as you know, we got shipped stuff from J.C. Newman, right? Yes. And I had this. I didn't know what date we were going to go in order and all that stuff and, until uh, I got marching orders. But I have two of these left. These are freaking awesome, right? And it just happens to be the uh, stick of the week, right? Um, and I was like, wow, when am I talking about this? Like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm talking about the La Unica Natural um 400 it's available in uh six different sizes you have a 100 200 300 400 500 and 600 the 400 is a four and a half by 50 you have a connecticut shade wrapper dominican binder and filler this is a bundled cigar from jc newman that they have to offer um let me tell you something this bullet cut it in the morning is super freaking tasty. And I'm not saying that J.C. Newman's a sponsor. Um, I- I'm actually happy that they're a sponsor. They- they've turned me on to the La Gustre Sun Growns. Uh, I mean, I've always been a fan of Diamond Crown, Arturo Fluente. You know what I mean? Uh, they've-, they've turned me on to this stick. And um, it's in regular production. If you go check it at a shop, it's, a bun- it's in a bundle. Um, super cool price. Uh, it definitely doesn't break the bank. Uh, great intro- introductory stick for some of your novice friends that come over and have a fire pit and smoke half the stick just because of the price point. But you will not be disappointed with this stick here. Oh yeah, you're gonna yeah, get. I'm... Oh yeah, it, it's. Uh, have you had? You've had it, right? No, I have not. I'm looking at it right now online. I'm like, wow, this this would be a great stick to get my friends into J.C. Newman stuff because they're every time I have my black diamonds, they always want to go for those. I'm like, no, you're not touching my black diamonds. <laughs> yeah, those it's, are mine. It's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, first of all, yeah. construction, complexity, flavor, and balance. Right, complexity, yeah. I'd give it an eight. Right, flavor, I'd give it an eight, maybe a nine. Balance, I'd give it a nine. It's so balanced. It's so tasty. Uh, it's a light smoke, so it's not yeah. it, it's not from my profile that that I normally go to. But you get a little bit of cream, a little bit of wood towards the. If you bullet cut it, I think you're gonna get that black pepper, right? Um, but you definitely get like cedar all day. So oh, yeah. you know, kind of <laughs> you know, if I could compare it to something, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had like a classic. Romeo and Julieta, Cedro number six. You know what I mean? Like a yeah. classic. So you're gonna get classic tobacco. Classic flavor. I think some of us yeah. boutique chases might call it flat because we're used to that pepper blast right. from the Nicaraguan there. But it is Dominican. But let me tell you something. It's super friggin' tasty. Nice. It's super tasty. Some... Drew, I have a box for you that's on my desk that, that's being um, compiled. Okay. So I have two left. So do you want me to sure. throw one in there? Uh, yeah, you can do that. That'd okay. There you go. I'll, just... I'll make sure that that gets over. I'll get that. Uh, that's uh, that's over to you. Uh, I'll call there. my bu- I'll call I'll call my namesake over there at Drew and have him throw me some few. <laughs> no, I got all I got to do is throw it in a box and go go down there. Um, I okay. have the box. I have the little bubbles around it. I all have right. the Bovita packs. I have the Ziploc bag. So I got everything I need. I just got to freaking just throw shit in now. There's no excuse. There you go. I can't <laughs> have that in the mail by freaking Tuesday. Text me Tuesday morning <laughs> or call me when I'm on my way into work and say, get my box, and I'll, I'll do that. I was supposed to do I was supposed to do that last week, but I yeah, was like, Yeah, uh, I probably wouldn't have got done last week. I've been a little bit busy yeah. here. <laughs> you know? Um, I got you, brother. Yeah. So, um, it, it, it's a barely medium smoke, right? But if you want a break of something that, that you haven't had, and let me tell you something, you can get these bundles, for, they're freaking cheap. They are oh, super, yeah. super cheap. Well, it's like you said, it's probably a great morning cigar, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great morning cigar, a uh, great introductory cigar if you have some friends. And and it's it's definitely a go back to, right? Um, Stoic Geek rating. I mean, it's a bundle, right? So let's assume a bundle is qualified as a box. Yeah. And you have a new friend who's getting into cigars. I do box split with a friend. But I could certainly see myself buying a bundle of these and 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 have it. In fact, when a bundle was sent, I have two left. Nice. So have you ever had one of these? There you go. There you have that. Now I have none left. That's how it works. All right. So I so now I have none left. So there you go. Um yeah. So get them at your local retailer. 
Yeah, you know. So yeah, and, and you can you can you can get those. You can you can get them online if you want to. You know what I mean? They're they're, they're super cool sticks. Uh, that don't break the bank. I mean, you're talking like six change a piece. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Cool, Nelson. Oh, I'm excited about this one. All right, let's go. This is this is one of my faves. This is one of my go tos. Uh, Tatoe Reserva K22. Oh, it's a fantastic <laughs> stick. Why are you laughing? You hate it? What's going on? No, no. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, it's, a good, it's a great cigar. I'm, like, I'm sorry. Like I'm just it. laughing. What's going on? I'm laughing out of joy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love this stick. It's a uh, Connecticut Broadleaf uh, Nicaraguan binder filler. Um, made it to my father's cigar factory. And yeah. this thing, I mean, talk about you know balance. This thing is fantastic from beginning to end. You start it, it's nice and creamy at the beginning. I, I, can re I still remember the first time smoking it. That's how I know a good cigar. I still remember the first time I started puffing it. Um, so nice and creamy at the beginning. You get some uh, oats and toasted nuts throughout, and then like a very mild spicy finish on it in the last third. Um, great burn, awesome smoke, and I call it, like I, I have a category of cigars I call the experience cigars. Like the whole experience is great. And that's what I get out of this this tatuaje. It's just a, a fantastic experience, and I, I just saw it next door at the at the humidor next door. I was pretty excited to see it there because it, it's just a fantastic stick, and I, I highly recommend it. Uh, morning, noon, night, I'll smoke this thing any time of day. It's it's that good. Um, yeah. Now, while I say that, is it box worthy? I don't know. I don't know if it's box. I'm going to say this is a box split. Uh, Stogie Geeks rating. Yeah. You know, I would definitely split up split a box with someone. Um, you know, they're not the, the cheapest sticks. Uh, but it's definitely this this is something that could be like an everyday stick. It's it's that good. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I've had this stick in the I've had I'm, i agree with you on that. The stick I've had the stick in the uh uh mid morning, uh, early afternoons and uh I'm right now I'm developing a part of my humidor where I'm actually using I'm getting sticks like this particular stick, yeah, and putting it to my what I call my pallet. Uh, trying to get my a pallet rester, you know what I'm saying? It's like okay. I kill my pallet because I because my pallet right. It's been going through because I, I I'm a heavy. I, I love heavy body cigars, and so to a fault that I I don't give my pallet enough time to rest sometimes. And I can and I can really. The other day I was smoking one of the uh, Placencia's uh, cigars that I had. One of the lighter offerings they had, and my palate just was blown up. And Reserve I was like, original? Got... Yes, Reserve original. There you go. Exactly what I was smoking. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just, one I would just, <laughs> yeah, and I was just like really blown away that my palate just couldn't really, like, really enjoy the sticks. I've had that stick. Joe and I've had that stick many times. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I just had to. So I started to figure out recently just by talking with. Uh, how do you say that uh, specialist or uh, and just talking about ways to give my palate a rest and the way to do that is to just gravitate more to the lighter uh, offerings um, in any lines but yeah uh, I'm just going geekish there so <laughs> no and I, I found this one to be very like it's more like a medium I would say this is yeah, like a medium it, cigar yeah I think uh, the, the Connecticut Broadleaf tones it down a little bit yeah yeah, yes. you know, but yeah, definitely, yeah, no, for sure. So, Did you bullet, yeah, but no, but uh, I, I would definitely. I bullet. I'm usually bullet. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I switch between bullet and uh, and V cuts. Really, yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry, Joe. You were saying? No, what I was saying was that yeah, I I definitely uh, agree with you on this smoke though. I it's it it, it once it complements pretty much any time of the day. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Drew. You're next. We're gonna burn through a couple of your sticks so you can have your exodus out time wise. Because <laughs> I'm gonna finish my sticks, and Nelson's gonna finish his sticks. Okay, so I'll go to Casa Cuevas uh, Habano, the five by fifty-two robusto. All I'm gonna say is I am the only one in the Northeast who loves this smoke. Oh man, uh, I, a, I've, yeah. I have asked countless people, "Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Are you getting this?" Like, right? uh, no, yeah. And I'm like, "Are you serious? Like, what? what? Like, dude, <laughs> you're, you're the only one who has this freaking who likes this stuff." Like, I'm. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. So wrapper is Ecuador, uh, binder, Nicaraguan, and then filler is Colombia, Dominican Republic, Nicaraguan, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, so this stick is, I mean, 
you get a lot of bang for your buck in this stick. Right. I mean, this stick price is seven twenty to eight forty, respectively. You know, and then depending on taxes, it's offered in three vitolas, so you don't have a lot of you. You know, your flavor spectrum is going to be pretty pretty close, uh, and things of that nature. But uh, uh, body body on the cigar is probably going to be more on the upper medium uh, level. Uh, flavor intensity, it's going to be in the upper medium as well. So I would say out of five, you're going to give it about a four. Uh, complexity, same thing, and then smoke volume. You're, this is where you this is where you know you got a pretty decent cigar. The smoke, and I'm not saying this smoke output, crazy out smoke output is not it's not great. But on this type of cigar, where you got four of the five uh, grading uh, factors. The smoke volume on this is more on the medium. So, I mean, it's just right down the middle. So, I would say about a three, uh, two, two, two and a half to three. Uh, so, you're going to get a lot of coffee out of this one, a really nutty, a nutty spice. And then you're going to come back with some hearth for sure on the second part of this stick. And then the intensity of, 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 uh, of flavor just really starts to, you know, bring itself out in this, in the cigar, the aromas. Uh, you just can't beat it. Um, really natural. Really, uh, uh, you get some wood there, and I'm going to say on the wood on this one here, you're going to be more on the cedar, on the light cedar side to it, and then you just uh, earth just kind of takes care of the stick the rest of the way. Drew, for um, the Stogie Geeks listeners that are listening and not watching, what's repeat the name of the stick again? Yeah, Casa Cuevas Habano. Yep, gotcha. Okay. I just think that's part of the emails yeah. I get. When you go through the description, yeah. I, I need to I need to rewind and go back. So go back, you go. go back. Yep. Yeah. So you had uh, the Casa Cuevas uh, Habano. Gotcha. Yeah, Habano. I'm yeah, with exactly. you. Yep. The blends. Yeah, the blends and the filler uh, are identical to the Habano and the Maduro. So yep. have you had the Maduro the wrapper? I've, I have not had the Rupert. I do have it. I just haven't smoked it yet. Ooh. Uh, that's the one. So yeah. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. The Maduro is the one. He knows. Uh, let me. I'm saving this like my prom date. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So the Maduro. But yeah, the wrapper. Uh, yeah, the wrapper is going to make a huge difference. I yeah. mean, you 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 know that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But to have the same blend, but then have it in the Habana or Maduro and the Maduro offering, yep. uh, they actually did a great service to you know to everybody in the, uh, the cigar aficionados to really, you know. Uh, get these get these uh, offerings out there, but yeah, really great. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, I, I'd fight Chuck Norris for this one. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't fight Chuck. I don't fight Chuck Norris that often, but mm. you know what? This is one I would have to fight him for. You, ma- <laughs> okay? Um, you haven't had the Maduro. I've not had the Maduro. Put it, put it this way. Right there, put it this I'm way. I'm gonna tell you right now. That's gonna be. I already know what that's going to be. I think you should smoke it on your way back to work. Uh, back to Casa Cuevas, right? Last week yeah. and the week before, I went on a chase. Now, keep in mind, when I cigar chase, I don't jump online and just buy. Oh, I call the brick and mortars. That's where I found out in Northeast. I'm like, you're getting these, you're getting these. I have smoked through their line and was going to take some time out in the future. They're on my list of bands over here to talk about, right? Um, to go through their line and... What I've noticed about the line is, is, did you only have one? You only had the Habano. You never had the other one? The I, had, the I, had, I had three of their Habanos. Okay. So you only have one line. What I've noticed about Casa Cuevas, you ever had Casa Cuevas? Yes. Okay. What I've noticed about that, there is a freaking ingredient in there that sticks out through all of their freaking smokes that I, I, I can identify what it is, but I can't identify why it's so unique to that stick when you're looking at the Regardless place. of the wrapper? No, yeah, regardless of the wrapper, regardless, yeah. so it's something in a binder and a filler that's like, wow, like it, 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 it lingers. I'm again, I'm speaking to my palate, obviously, right? It lingers on my palate. It, it, from a lingering perspective, it reminds me of like an Islero by MLB Cigar Ventures, uh, mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, you could smoke that. And like an hour later, have nothing, you know, depending if your schedule allows you or whatever. And you'd be like, wow, it's still there. Like it lingers there. That friggin' Maduro is so awesome. Mm. It is so good. I bullet cut. I bullet boom. Put that through. It's awesome. I was actually pumped that they're in regular production. Uh, yeah. I have to go online or jump in my car and drive two hours if I want some, um, which I think is kind of crazy. Just don't break the speed limit. 
Don't, right. don't break the speed limit and get a ticket again. Yeah, I got to get my essential paperwork, you know, for the governor. <laughs> I'm on story geeks. I was told across state lines. You know what I mean? Doing <laughs> historical stuff. All right, bring it. All right. But, but, but let me tell you something, Drew. That Maduro is something special. My advice oh, to you, smoke it over the weekend when you have time to chill. Don't smoke it in your car and no. be distracted. That is such a super cool stick. Such yeah, a fan yeah. of Casa Cuevas. What's your take? I like them. I don't know that I would go Chuck Norris sure. on it, um, but I, I think they're delicious. I mean, that, that's how I would yeah. describe it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't had the Maduro myself either. Okay. I've also only had the Habano. Okay. Um, so now I'm very interested in trying the Maduro because I, I can't imagine. That's why I was wondering why you did the Chuck Norris, knowing that there's yeah. the Maduro. Because yeah. now there's nowhere to go. Drew, Drew's yeah, gonna... there is. What are you talking about? Yeah, Wait, there is. It's a work in progress. What comes after? Uh, Oasis. Oh, the Oasis. Oh, the Oasis. Drew, oh. Come on, brother. Here's come on, my I prediction. Already... Here's my prediction. <laughs> Drew's going to come back next week and say, okay, I gave that fight Chuck Norris. Yeah. That's now going to be like a box split, and this is the fight right. Chuck Norris. <laughs> like, that, that's how confident I am of yeah. putting that stick on the line. And I don't do that that often here on the show by saying, oh, wow, okay, I've had the brand, I've had it, and I've had the Habano as well. So I've asked. I've smoked through the line. And like I said, I'm, 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 I think that the Haban, the Maduro, you are going to say, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for last week's story geek training, <laughs> but it's now a box worthy, and the new fight Chuck <laughs> Norris is this. In fact, I'm giving Chuck Norris the Habano, and I'm going to fight him for the Maduro. It's going to be the Pete Rose of cigars. There's going to be a little asterisk next to the Chuck, oh, yeah. fight Chuck Norris. Oh, well, there's always yeah. asterisks near mine if, if that's the case. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Awesome. All right, Drew, before you kick off another stick, I want to talk to the Story Geeks over here about a promotion that we're doing. Now, pay attention to this promotion because this promotion is only available September 16th. Through September 30th, 2020. So we are talking about this. I'm going to post it on social media. But I got to get you ready for this because if you binge watch us or whatever you do in podcast world, you don't want you to miss it. So I have a promotion for the Story Geeks. If you want the promo code and you want to get ready, you can email me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. And say, I want to talk about that mega deal you were talking about. I'll give you all the details, the URL to purchase it, and then go forth from there. You are going to get 74% MSRP. This is a value of over $200. It's $3.49 per stick delivered to your house. Okay? Wow. It's only valid for September 16th through the 30th. You're going to have to use a promo code. So... You can email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com or you can hit me up on Twitter and Facebook. I can ping it to you or DM, PM, whatever it's called there. This is what it looks like. Okay? This is exactly what it looks like. And this is where you need to be. You're going to get all of these cigars for uh, $69.99, free shipping included. So if you are interested and you want to ramp up and be organized for that, is a limited number of deals, and you have to use a promo code. So there you go. But Joe, what are the cigars? You have to find out. Uh, ah. I'm releasing it, uh, and uh, that that's going to happen again for the next story geeks and the next story geeks. And that's then, the best and part. Yeah. So there you go. Nice little tease. There we go. Like it. You won't be disappointed. All right, Drew. What have you been smoking? All right. So what do you have? A couple more, be... right? Yeah, I got a Florida Sun Grown uh, Robusto. I think I've already talked about this cigar, but the Drew Estate. Uh, went, yeah, Drew Estate. Ooh, the FSG. Uh, yeah, Love yeah, talking about FSG. Drew. Yeah, so you get your little Jeff, man purse uh, going across there. Like that. <laughs> I don't do that. But <laughs> in uh, Texas, you'll they'll, they'll put your. Uh, <laughs> there's no man put purses your in Texas. Yeah, uh, they'll I'm put a, your cojones. I digress. Yeah, I digress. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, they'll put your cojones uh, in 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 there in that man purse, uh, but you can walk around with a saddle. I've been told that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, uh, we all know, you know. Well, okay. Well, let's let's just pretend we all don't know. So, uh, Florida Sun Grown FSG Robusto Five by Fifty Four Master Blenders Willie Herrera mm -hmm. uh, by Drew Estate. Drew Estate. Uh, so wrapper Brazilian uh, binder Honduran and then filler Nicaraguan and U.S. Uh, 
USA. Uh, price point on these are going to run from 11.50 to 15 bucks, just depending on where you're at in these in these great United States. They offer this in four Vitolas. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, cigar is a medium body cigar. Uh, the flavor is definitely balanced in this cigar. Uh, I, I I give it a complex of three out of the five, and smoke volume. Well, you know Drew Estate. I mean, uh, most of the cigars I've smoked from them they have very high content and smoke volume, and I mean even the Ligas for me are pretty smoky when it comes to their sticks. But anyhow, uh, note cream notes on this one. It's gonna I'm gonna start this off with a, a little creamy um you know at, at the beginning and then it just transitioned back into the uh minerals uh from there not a lot of spice for sure uh this one more on the nutty side and i'm going to say more on the almond side of of nuttiness uh wood characteristics i'm going to give this a like a little bit of a just a slight and i don't I, and i'm not sure but that day my palate was tasting a little bit of char on this one, yeah. so just just enough to to get me my mind thinking there what what's going on here, uh, and then it ran into the uh, 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 chocolate um, flavor, but not 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 uh, I'm going to say a, a bitter chocolate, but uh, uh, I got a real dark chocolate. There you go, and then uh, from there just transition into what I would call an espresso, uh, but again nothing too. Not, you know, and I think that's where that complex comes in uh, between the chocolate and that espresso bean flavor I was getting out of there uh, that particular uh, day. Um, I've smoked a lot of these. I mean, I've I've probably had at least I'm going to say 13 to 15 of these cigars in the past year, mm. and uh, yeah, the, the again they stay pretty consistent, burn pre pretty well. Instruction on the cigar has is, is pretty, been pretty tight. Um, I've actually done a double V-cut on this particular cigar. Um, crisscross. Crisscross. What's that? Yeah, yeah crisscross, yes. Yeah, sure. Yep, yep. And that's just to get a really nice, big, intense draw uh, for my retro hell on this cigar. So uh, really great stick. I, I, I give it a, I give it a, a, a box split um, with this one. Uh, it's an easy stick to share with a lot of your friends, mm -hmm. uh, anyone in a circle. It doesn't really, I mean, I, I, I've actually gotten this stick a little cheaper than 1150, but, uh, who knows, maybe I got the 10%, uh, you know, frequent flyer program down at the, uh, my, uh, cigar lounge, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, great stick. And, uh, you, it's just one of those sticks that, uh, that really leaves you, uh, uh, feeling satisfied. So did you get a saltiness component from the wrapper I in got, a good way yeah i was gonna say it yeah you know there was a little bit of a almost like uh man it was a, it was kind of exotic i just couldn't right. really put my it, it, i couldn't it, really it, it was right. not like regular salt when you say salt it's not a regular salt no, it's, no, it's no. a little more now exotic side. it's it to me it's classic drew right like like yeah. drew estate it's to me, it's like kind of like if you're into craft beers and you look at stuff from Southern Tier. You ever have Southern yeah. Tier? Yes. Right? Whatever the name of the beer is, it lets you know what you're drinking. Right. You know what you're getting. You, you know, like, like, you know. And with Drew Estate, like, you know what you're expecting from a Liga. You know what you're expecting yes. from an Acid. You know what you're expecting from a Tabac, Isla del Sol. Help me out. I'm missing 27 Deadwood. other brands, right? But you, Deadwood, but you know what yeah. you're smoking, right? <laughs> yeah. And when the Florida Sun Grown comes in, and I look at how much I like Florida Sun Grown in w comparing that to, uh, I don't know, La Cruz Torre Sun Grown. Yeah, of course, uh, it's like I, I almost get like that, that risotto wrapper – sweetness but almost saltiness from it which lets me know that i'm smoking a sun grown there that's, that's yeah. the only point i'm trying to make is that like true it's called the fsg stands for florida sun grown it lets you know it's smoking florida sun grown it's so tasty it's so good i just found it not not a bad saltiness but you really know that you're smoking yeah. different. you're not surprised no, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. Right. That's how. That's how Drew is. You know what I mean? I mean, if yeah. if, if Drew came up with a freaking cotton candy, you'd be like, shit, it's sweet. 
Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you, you'd be like, oh, wow, this is freaking... It Where can I like, buy that? Uh, or Skittles or, or right. whatever. Like, it, 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 it's just how they are with their naming sure. process. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. that's just one characteristic. So, if you're a Stogie Geek listener and you want to get into some Sun Thrones, you got to put that in your, in your repertoire, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this, this, like I said, this thing right here won't leave you, uh, won't leave you, uh, not wanting uh, to visit it uh, later. You'll yep. want to visit it sooner. And like I said, price point on the stick, it just depends on where you're at in the United States. Yep. Uh, you, you should be able to pick up the stick pretty, 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 uh, pretty comparable to, yep. you know, uh, any other offerings you have. Uh, so my last stick I smoked was going to be the McAuliffe cigar uh, from the McAuliffe cigar line, uh, McAuliffe Experienza. So, mm. Uh, this wrapper, uh, I actually had the Prominente uh, cigar. Uh, it's uh, wrappers from Mexico. They also have a Nicaraguan wrapper as well. That one, that this this stick is uh, this profile is offered in two Vitola, uh, two flavors. I'm sorry, and uh, so you got a Mexican, a Mexico <laughs> wrapper, and a Nicaraguan wrapper. The Nicaraguan they call it La Crema. Uh, the Mexico they call it Prominente. Uh, so uh, the binder's not disclosed. The filler's not disco- cl- disclosed. Uh, the body on this is going to be more on the mild side, uh, on the upper echelon of mild. So I'm going to give it like a one and, and a quarter on the mild. Uh, and again, I'm going on, on my scale, one to five. Uh, it's got a lots of flavor. So it, it definitely has a lot of flavor uh, in it. So I'm going to give that about a four. And then the smoke volume on this is uh, about a four as well. So you are going to get a lot of you're going to, you're going to be choo choo trained down the wherever you're at. <laughs> gotcha. People may people might tell you to go sit on the other side of the lounge or go outside. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, taste notes on this was uh, again we we started this with uh, more of a uh, nut uh, almost like a hazelnut so kind of a hazelnut there uh, into a chocolate and then it went into some spice. And then also, and there was uh, some cedar was present there for sure, and that was actually that actually was creating to me the complex, because then you also had a lot of cream, and then you also had some earth following that as well. So uh, this cigar here, I, I'm 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 going to give it a a, a try one. Uh, uh, would I go back to it again? Pro- uh, probably not. Uh, not for me, uh, just because of the smoke content, and again, it's 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 more on the mild side, and even on my my new humidor that I'm uh, filling in with milder cigars, uh, it just left a lot of open end questions for me. You know, mm-hmm. like what is what is this flavor? Well, just so <laughs> why, you know, why why can't I dial in on it? Uh, you know, things of that nature. Yep. So Just yeah, so you know, uh, Andy's coming to studio mid September. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, he's well, we'll flying talk, in. We'll he's flying in from. From where he's from and 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 traveling there and and I was okay. like, bro, you need to come down to the studio and like educate me on my caliph. Yeah, yeah, like because yeah. like the you, like the northeast thing, like like you have so many. Because what happened was they sent us a sampler for for story geeks, but it's one mm-hmm. right. And then you know I don't know how you smoke or whatever. We can get into this later uh, during this episode, but choose a little crunch for time, but. Uh, you know, I, I want to. Um, it's like, it, it's like I, I want, I, I want you to like take your line, spread it on a table, and tell me where I need to go. You so know that, what I mean? That's interesting. You say I, I, I because actually, there are a bunch of cigar companies out there that it's like, dude, like I, I need like, and you can do this profiles. virtually. Like if, if, especially with COVID, you could do this. By the way, if you're a cigar yeah. company and you want to do this virtually and you don't know how to do it, email me at joehstoyeeks.com. You can come do this for for. for any of your lines and any of the listeners, I want to spread out your cigars and tell tell the story geek listener where to go because we're not gonna sort through forty something. Not that McAuliffe has forty, but they're in the teens, low teens, eleven, yeah. right? Like yeah. you know, you're just not gonna get it because not everyone's gonna get all of them because if they didn't like the samples, then they have no shot of getting in. So it's it's interesting you bring that up. I did exactly that. So with McAuliffe, it's funny we're talking about the McAuliffe. It's the yeah. first cigar brand that I actually reached out to them on Instagram. I messaged them, and I said, hey, I just was flat out. I said, I'm, I want to try your sticks. 
which one do you recommend first? Yeah. And they actually replied. They they came back. Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. layered. Well, what is it called? L E Y something. Again, oh, it's uh, it's. I'm all I'm all. I forget what poof. it's called, but they came back to me. The the point is they came back, and you know. You're right. They should be proactive in pushing out. I've been, Try this first. Yeah. I, I right? was on their podcast. I was on their podcast uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I watched it. Right? Yeah, thank you. And uh, and I, I, that was one of the things I said to them. Like, you know, you need to just freaking, like, figure it out. Like, you know what I mean? Because that's the way it goes. Anyway, Drew, finish your rating so you, you can wrap up. And uh, Nelson has a couple of sticks, Johnny and uh, uh, Gustavo. And I have two more sticks, and then we're going to wrap up. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna give. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna give this a, a, a try. A try it. You know, try it again. I mean, like I said, I now they're bold line. I, I'm there all day long when it comes to the Matafina, uh, and anything that they have in their bold line. Man, I, I love their, I love their bold line. I mean, they're you just mm-hmm. don't. To me, uh, that's one thing that McAuliffe, uh has for me. But when it comes to this one, it just, it just kind of left me wondering. You know, what exactly. Uh, what what was in that and and how uh, how can I get other people you know inspired to want to smoke well, this cigar? Well, McAuliffe obviously Stogie Geeks. We've been saying this for a while since the beginning of this year. McAuliffe is a sponsor of the show. Full disclosure, and you know uh, we've said you know you go to StogieGeeks.com, click on the McAuliffe banner, you become an ambassador for them. And like I see ambassadors posting sticks of theirs that I've never that I, I didn't because they only sent me the box. Right. And I'm like, I, and so I called him and I said, I need a reset. Like, if you're a sponsor of the show, and if you want to continue being a sponsor of the show, thank you, but I still need a reset. If you don't want to continue yeah. sponsoring the show in 2021, that's fine too, but I still need a reset because I don't have a, a baseline. How can I just you speak I, to I'm, it? I'm, I'm, I'm all over the map with them because I've had good ones and I've taken a picture and then I have a process where I put a star next to it or I. Or I archive what I'm going to talk about and doing that there but like even with my process I'm still all over the map I need them to come down and freaking show me what's up but Drew you mentioned you were trying to pinpoint the flavors right was it at least yeah did you get that that unknown flavor throughout the the all three thirds of the stick yeah yeah that's what I'm saying I mean I, there's there was just something there was a component in there I just wasn't really it wasn't really uh you know jiving with my, with my brain and it just like I just couldn't really put my finger on it. And I tried everything. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I I have jars of like eucalyptus, you know, things that are not in your everyday cigar. You know, I I've got I've got I'm really geekish about this. I'm a lot of people are just sniffs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, scratch I and mean, sniff. There you go, Johnny. A, title a, a, title a name. Star- <laughs> Star of Benice, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Just things that are that are really not there in, in in a lot of cigars. And I just try to I just really try to marry that component with with the you know with what I'm you know with what I have in my collection of uh, of 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 trying to really figure out um, you know different woods you you know peppers uh, things of that na- nature just to try to figure you know hone in on that. But this one here left me kind of lost. Uh, had me at a loss. Uh, now the Habano San Andreas wrapper, or or the uh, the uh, you know things of, you know that the prominent, uh, you definitely taste that San Andreas uh, wrapper in there. And from that, you you kind of just left at what your experience in cigar smoking to mm-hmm. try to figure out the rest because they, again they they don't disclose it. But uh, yeah. Um, I, I would say that that's that's why the rating is what it is. It's just it's just uh, try one, and maybe if you do try one, go ahead and email me at drew uh, at stogiegeeks dot com and uh, let me know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for Andy to come down. He actually told me he was, and he's coming down to the studio, and I'm like, dude, yeah, let's, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time together and and do that there. Yeah, it's awesome, you know. So yeah, that'll be super cool. And that's that's all I have for my cigars for this uh, week. True. So. I know you got a time crunch and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I would, Nelson and I are going to talk about two more sticks each or so, and then bounce. Okay. But uh, I'll catch you later, Drew. Peace. All right, guys. Take care. Take care, and, Drew. Uh, any complaints? Send them to me. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> when I wrap up the show, all of your complaints go to Drew at StoryGeeks.com. I don't take that's them. Right. Send me the complaints. There you go. That's right. All right, Drew. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thank um, you, guys. Later, man. 
Uh, I want to talk, yeah. uh, Nelson. I want to talk about um, since we're on a uh, uh, JC Newman kick, and yep. because the um, the La Unica was at a, um, a, a a super cool price point, I think it being a bundled cigar and whatnot. Uh, I got, I started having a natural progression into the Quorum Maduro Toro, and um, uh, again. I I was not disappointed by this cigar at all. That's actually one of the sticks I'm reviewing today. That's crazy because no for those of you loyal Stogie, Stogie Geeks listeners, and I thank you in June. I thank you. Um, as you know, I don't know what they're gonna review. I like I don't. That's how the call went when I was talking to Nelson. Or fair, I'm like, yeah, man, just just show up and just talk sticks. That's like, pretty much what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, just, just show up and talk sticks. We're good. Like, we're, it's all cool. Uh, so that's cool. So maybe uh, I can give mine and you can chime in and, and we can we can go forth from there. Uh, the size I had was a 6x50. It's a Toro. Uh, wrapper is a Sumatra Sun Grown. Your binder is Nicaraguan. Your filler is Nicaraguan. It's produced out of the J.C. Newman factory. Um, and... It, again, this is a bundled stick. I bullet, I bulleted this the bullet this stick, and it's a it's a friggin' go to for me, like a complete like wow like you don't really need to break the bank to have a super cool tasting stick. And this isn't like oh wow they're a sponsor I'm all excited about it. This is like wow man like this is a really really good stick uh, here. Uh, characteristics from what I got. Uh, I find the the complexity of it to be in, like in that medium range. Totally right? agree. Right uh, there, uh, body, you get some good smoke there. Um, medium, it doesn't kill your palate at all. And I get a little bit of kind of like a dark fruit, but that natural tobacco, even the same natural tobacco esque. From the other stick that we talked about, uh, I, I'm 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 very impressed with these. When you look at them and 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 they're bundled, you're like, ah, you know, it's a bundled stick. But I really don't think that the 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 Stogie Geeks listener would be disappointed in this. I've I had the Toro size. Uh, I want to go with with some of the other size and and kind of uh, experiment with. Uh, with 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 that but it's a super cool stick yeah so i'll i'll talk i don't want i won't go into all the details because literally it's the same i literally smoked a toro as well so no, good yeah go for same it. detail so i'll talk a little bit about that and maybe just go into the other one um definitely agree i i mean i jotted down medium all the way through everything was kind of medium for me mm -hmm. but i i literally wrote down in my notes here for the show best value like i just thought this stick could cost more money this could have yeah. a higher price point yeah and it's definitely, it's an affordable, I'm not going to call it a premium stick, but it's a really good stick. They could charge $10, $11 for this thing. It's and a really good bargain it's, stick. It's an awesome bargain stick. It's, it's fantastic. I got, I got a little bit, I, 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 I didn't think about the fruits till you said it. I would say it's more of like a, for me, it was a, like a bitter fruit. Um, and I definitely got uh, chocolate in the beginning. I got a little bit of chocolate and like spicy chocolate, I would say, throughout um, but definitely a consistent smoke all the way through. Um, I don't remember having a lot of touch-ups on it. You know, mm -hmm. I thought it had a great burn. And I, I do remember, that's why I, I jotted down at best value, because I remember smoking it, saying to myself, I can't believe this thing is at the price that it's at. It was, it was that good of a cigar. Right, right. And I'm using my little J.C. Newman cheese sheets here, just so you know, so, cause, uh, uh, just for the size component. Uh, it's available in Churchill, Double Gordo, Torpedo, Toro, Corona, Robusto, um, the Tres Petit, and the Short Robusto. I'd be interested uh, in Short Robusto, 3.5 by 50, or the Robusto, uh, 4 and 3 fourths by 50. Uh, I probably wouldn't get into uh, the Churchill size or stuff like that. But, I agree. I, but, I would go for a shorter one. Yeah, go for a shorter one. See what one. the flavor's like. And, and again, uh, for, for the Story Geeks listener, it's 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 a bundle, and it's a super cool stick. 
I see what you're saying. There is this. You look at it, even if you see it at a store, a retail shop. Oh right? yeah. Oh, it's a bundle. Like, oh, it's not going to be a great stick or something like that. And right. Don't judge a book by its cover. All Just right. Don't from, judge a book by its cover. From owning a brick and mortar shop, when we would have retails, like you got to remember, when I owned a brick and mortar, it was a topsy turvy world, right? Boutiques were cheaper. <laughs> and classic facings were more expensive, right? Now it's the opposite. It's flip-flopped, right? yeah. Um, we would get bundles, and we would put them in a wooden shelf in the humidor and present them there, and, and, and they, would, they would not sell unless they were in a box with presentation. I mean, a couple of people who know their brand would, would do it, yeah. but when you talk about like pushing sticks and selling sticks, it's there. But, you know, you don't have to... Um, you know, go bundle. I'm sorry, you don't have to go box. I mean, shit. We all talk about this every day and uh, on Story Geeks. Wouldn't be a show if I didn't mention Tatuai, right? Tatuai pork tenderloin. It's essentially a bundle. It's not a box. It's no, in it's a baker's wrap like a and uh, bag or something, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like in a in the, that that white paper you would get from the butcher shop right. and and doing that there. And it's technically a bundle of stick, and, and, and it's like it's super freaking tasty. Do you know when they came out with this? I didn't look that up to see when they came. is this a newer line or no? It, it corn's been around. It's been around. It's been around even since since I was around at okay. the shop. I just so, discovered it this year. Yeah, so we're talking nineties. That that I know That's of. That's great stick. Yeah. Yeah, super cool stick. Spent around, and and it's probably a staple now. Culture wise, down south, that doesn't matter. Why Be- you say that? Well, because if you were to go to some of the places like in Little Havana or South Florida, not quite as far north as Tampa, right? But if you were to go down, say from like Pompano Beach down south, there, some of the like super cool, tasty stuff. Is is in? I mean, you have your boxes, but some of the super cool bargain sticks, if you will, right. are loose in a in, in a in a wooden shelving apparatus from right. there. Or some of them even have like the the bundle open, and you can just pick out as many as you want, and they just stood Out of the up. wrapper, right? Yeah, and they yeah, just yeah, stood yeah. up there, and, and you get some super cool unknowns that are just geographically there. Well, that's why I think you said that earlier, and I. I I say this to everyone I know that is just getting into cigars or has been doing it. And I think Drew hit on this earlier. You got to try different things. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're you like full Maduros, try a Connecticut now and then. Like try something different. Mm-hmm. Um, not every cigar is made the same way, right? Mm-hmm. Not every Connecticut is light. So it's always good to try. So what, what's your Stogie Geeks rating on this? I mean, I buy a bundle. And the only reason why I judge the Story Geeks rating system for me, would I shovel through a box in a year or six months? And if the answer is yes, then it becomes a box. If, if, the, if it's Story Geeks box split with a friend, if the story's super cool and you and your friend chased after this other stick or right. they're kind of hot to come by or they're wicked expensive, right, that that, comes to me play. that warrants box split with a friend. Like, you know, like I've get, have it Opus X's and I've said, yeah, it's a box split with a friend. Why? Because it's a price point. Exactly. You can't tell someone to go out there and rock four or $500 in a box. You know what I mean? Or some of them can get six, $700 with a box, right? So I try to be fair. And, I, and me personally, uh, ever since I was on the show, I, I never tried to send them on a wild goose chase. Like, oh, look what I have and you don't have because it's not available anymore. And I found it in Paul's humidor that's been freaking, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can find in Paul's humidor. I could, we could literally do an episode live if we were able to walk with these little airplane things we were wearing, right? And, and like, we could pull out stick for stick and say, okay, they're out of business. They're out of business. Right. From Paul's experience from Stogie Geeks, right? Um, alone, just from that time frame. Right. Let alone, you know, some, like, some of the stuff from, like, Evil Genius the gods. They were freaking awesome, right? Gone. Like, gone. You know what I mean? Like, gone, you know? And, you know. Maybe it's because you didn't say hi to me at an event, but anyway. Uh, I, I actually agree. I, w- I would give it a bundle rating as well. Yeah. That's, I would totally give yeah, this a bundle I, rating. I, I was blown it's away it. by it. The, the, pr- the price is worth it. It's super good. You're going to get you're gonna get some earthiness. You're going to get some of your dried fruit like you were talking about. Huge value. Huge. Huge, huge value. And, again, it doesn't break the bank. And, you know, it, like, oh, my God, like I'm smoking a bundle of stick. It's crazy. Yeah. You know? So it's funny you're mentioning the hard to get. That's actually my next review. 
That's okay. That's good. That's so good. I'm going Cuban. I'm, I'm glad that we're going variety here. Yep, definitely. Know? And that's why I did. I tried to this week. I tried to smoke different things, knowing that I was going to come on here, try different things. So yep. I went with the um, the Bolivar Belisco Fino. Ooh. First time I ever smoked one. Um, very good cigar. Obviously, Cuban binder, filler, wrapper, mm-hmm. all of it. Um, it's actually known as the, it's apparently the strongest Bolivar they have in the line. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I would agree, it's definitely a full-bodied cigar, no question. Um, I got some, it was actually really pleasant, a nice earthy coffee, almost like the strongest coffee notes I've ever had uh, on a stick. Like just strong coffee on it uh, throughout. Not, it didn't diminish throughout the cigar at all. Um, the problem with it is the price. It's it's over five hundred bucks for a box. It's it's got a high price point. Um, definitely more of a premium stick from Cuba. Uh, but if you can get your hands on one, I highly. It's definitely I highly recommend it. Um, awesome burn. Like the smoke was fantastic. I'd give the smoke like a four out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, complexity was probably a three because again it was pretty consistent. It wasn't. It didn't change throughout. As I uh, as I smoked it, but definitely full bodied. Um, I I would give it a, a fiver uh, because mainly of what we just talked about. That the price point is crazy, <laughs> right? Right, and you're not going to be able to afford a box. <laughs> if you can go out and get it, um, you know a lot of people don't realize. I don't know if you talked about this on your show. You know you can buy Cubans. You just can't buy them in the U.S. So, you know, you can buy them in Switzerland. You can buy them from the UK. Mm-hmm. I think they even sell them in Hong Kong. So you, you can get them. It takes months for them to come to your house. Sure. Uh, but, but you can get them. But this, for me, this is one of the best Cubans I've smoked this year, actually. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, give, this, uh, I'd give this Belisco Fino a, a fiver. Mm-hmm. Just because of the exclusivity of it. They can't yeah. go to a local brick and mortar. If this yeah. thing was affordable, I, I'd say box this baby. But Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just too expensive. Yeah, that's a fair rating. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to use your rate my, my rationality for for your rating system. If you want to fight Chuck Norris for it, that's no, cool. no, no, no. This is definitely a fiver. You know, I I would give Chuck Norris the cigar that Nelson was talking about and have a quorum, and just roll out with Chuck Norris. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'd mess with people. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but that's just me. Fight Chuck Norris, you know, you know. But yeah, no, it's a. Uh, um, I don't. Do we? Have, is that the bot over there? See it right on the over the Monte Cristo Cubans? Oh, it's in the. Uh, F- well, there's definitely Bolivars there. I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll check that after. I don't the know show. what stick that is. I was like, that'd be funny if we have some of that. It's got the it's got the pyramid cap on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. A lot of people ask me like, what's your favorite Cuban? And there and and Bolivars in in my top three. What's what's your number one? A uh, Monte Cristo number two. Really? Yeah, Monte Cristo number two is my favorite. Cube. I like the Epicure number two. Okay. Hoyo de Monterey. Yeah. Epicure number two is by far nice, creamy cigar. Yeah. Fantastic. I would have to go Bolivar three, um, Potagus four or five. D four, yeah. Yep. Um, for two, and then Monte Cristo number two. And, and it's not a, a flavor thing. Like, I understand that the part of guess here comes the emails, right? <laughs> How can you say it about it? Crystal, no, I chose it. I'm on Cuba. No, it's not. It's, Joe it's, it's H. A, at Stogie Geeks. Right? <laughs> Joe H. Story, no, that's a complaint. <laughs> Drew at StogieGeeks.com, right? Uh, get, all the complaints go to Drew. Oh, sorry. Right? Um, New guy. You know, I, I, I like the, the um, like, I, I, when I smoke stuff, right, I smoke it for what it is. You know what I mean? And and this is your best representation of what you can give me and what you've either sent to me or I've bought or sought out or whatever my process. And I don't know. Like, sometimes I'm like, wow, man, I really want a Monte Cristo number two. Like, I, I, I think that's, a, for me, it's a cool after-dinner smoke, even though it's lighter than a lot of the Cubans. But obviously, I'm too changed. I'm a heavy eater. You know what I mean? I don't want a heavy yeah. smoke. You know what I mean? So I want a nice light smoke to chill out other people who might be slimmer might want a heavy smoke after dinner, but me, man, I'm, I'm focused. When I eat, I eat. Like that's why, I like cigar dinners, I go to them. But I actually love going to cigar dinners like an hour before, or an or an hour and a half before, sure. to get through a smoke, right? 
eat, and then light up and have another yeah, smoke. Yeah, you don't want to light up a full-body cigar right after you ate a giant but meal. But there's some people, they sit there, and they're, like, freaking doing that. The, and me, I'm like, no, nah, 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 I'm too changed. When I smoke, I smoke. When I eat, I eat. <laughs> yeah, it's two <laughs> different know? activities. You know what I mean? It's, it's way too different. Even two here at totally the office different activities. we have the luxury to have cigars because the office is like a giant humidor, right? Yeah. Freaking, you know, um, we, we – I, I don't smoke and eat at all. Yeah. You know, you hit on, you've said this several times, and Joe has said this to me, you know, outside the show. The whole thing we were just talking about, about the brands kind of pushing out, try, this is the stick you should try that represents me. And you just said it again. And I, I don't know why they don't do that. They don't do it. I, they don't do right? it. Right? They promote everything. And it, it, it's like, it's true. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this. You go in and you're like, I, I don't, Tatuaje. I like Tatuaje. like, just like, you know. 12 Tatuaje lines. Like, right. What do I try? I don't know. Right. So no. they, I, they don't, they don't. Do I it. wish there they, was more emphasis they, on that. They focus on a couple of things. They focus this is a great point. They focus on reputation. Who rolled it? If you're still a geek, right? Right. Or if you're watching other podcasts, you're still a still geek. All right. Just as long as you come back to still geeks. <laughs> right. And, and, and they or they focus on like who made it like oh this is a collaboration between who oh this is Pete Johnson stuff oh this is uh Willie Herrera oh this is freaking Ness Miranda this is Ness Vicencio this is you know Dumber and uh Steve Saka you know what I mean right. like they focus on that right and then they focus on like the lifestyle but I don't know about but how do you get in. But I don't know about your lifestyle, but, like, I'm not rocking a Rolex watch chilling in a cigar shop. According to my friends, I do because of what I <laughs> – because of where I work. Like, dude, you get to sit at your desk and smoke cigars, like, all day long. Some truth to that. They're like, yeah. The, <laughs> yes, I'm very lucky to have that opportunity. However, it, it's not like I'm freaking, like, you know, I want the – I want the Elmer de Campo on my yacht. You know what I mean? Or and I'm not picking on. The, I, I I like to pick on the sponsors first. You know what I mean? Right. Because you gotta have a balance, <laughs> right? So you know, I want the Elmer de Campo on the yacht, and then after that, I'm gonna have the Fuego, cause the chicks in the bikini over. Nah, no. it, it, that's not like that. You know, what I mean? know. it's like it's like it's it's like. But but they but to my knowledge, they focus on the lifestyle. Yeah. Or they focus on the reputation of the person not like hey man this is why i produced this and now i've gotten now if you here's the there's a downside story geeks you have a lot of homework to do if you listen to a lot of interviews that we've had i've asked blenders or owners or whatever what's inside your head of what you want us to experience when you're having your cigars and we've had phenomenal interviews yeah. and a history of phenomenal interviews since i've been on the show january 2nd of 2017 right of of uh of, of getting that out of them right the only reason why i'm giving a date is just so the story geeks don't have to go on a crazy wild goose chase right but it's like it's like and and and, and i think that if they hear what the owner or whatever position that we're we're, we're we're going with describes that, and then they have it and listen to the episode. They're like, "Wow, I can see that." Yeah, I'd be. But they don't do it more often. I'd be interested to see the breakdown, and and I guess I'm not talking like just you know how many people are the higher I don't want to call it the one percenters, but the higher end purchasers, mm -hmm. right? That consumers that come in because I I would believe most of the people that go into a retail shop are your average Joe. He just wants to smoke a good cigar, and that's where I think what you're talking about comes into play. Is like, how do I know which one to start with? Right, right. And even I, I would, I put some of this on the uh, the retail owners as well. They should be doing that homework because what's the first thing you do when you don't know what to get? You talk to whoever's there in the in the shop, right? And there you would, but you'd be surprised at how many shop employees are disconnected from the process. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's they're unfortunate. Disconnected. I mean, they, I've had that they, happen. I've gone into shops where you ask the person there, you know, what do you recommend? I like a medium body, whatever, and they have no idea. They just have no idea. Now you go down to South Florida. You done traveling out South Florida? I have, yeah. It's it's different experience. You go down there and they're like, no, no, no. Much try these. Yeah, see that, and I've had that. But experience. these are bundled sticks. Now. 
if they're bundled sticks, let's get into the brick and mortar conversation of it right quick. They're making more money on bundled sticks than they are on the box because of Keystone. I get it. Sure. But you know something? They're turning you on to something different. If you're traveling, that's what traveling is all about. You're getting turned on to something different. So I engage in that. You know what I mean? I engage in that process. When I, when I walk down uh, Little Havana and I go to a cigar shop, you know, I don't go in, hey, I'm Joe from Story Geeks. You know what I mean? I just go in and say, hey, you know, this is what I normally smoke. But what do you got for, like, some house blends or, or, or what do you got, like, like what, what, something, like, something. Here's where I live. I tell them I live in the Northeast. Here's where I live. Uh, what do you think? Oh, these are only available in this region. And we've interviewed people who are only available in, like, a specific state. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who've done some stuff. So, you know, and, and I think that that is an exploratory process, you know. But it's part of the whole picture. Sure. You know what I mean? But, you know, at the end of the day, it's about pushing sticks if they're there. But it's amazing how some of the employees are just totally disconnected. So you have an, uh, another stick? You? I have one more stick. How many do you have? Uh, I could do one more. All right, good. We have one more reach, and then we'll wrap up. That sounds like a good episode. We don't want to make it two more. You know, Drew will get upset if we double his time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I had the San Latano Oval Connecticut. Now, it took me a while to get into San Latano. Had them when they first came out. Liked them, but wasn't, like, wowed. Right? Um... Which happens a lot with me uh, there. Uh, your wrapper is Ecuadorian Connecticut Shade. Your binder is Nicaraguan. Uh, your filler is Honduras with Nicaragua. And a little bit of undisclosed uh, filler in there uh, as well. It's a 4.5 by 54. It's a Robusto. Comes in boxes of 20. Your MSRP without taxes is around 8 bucks a stick. So it can be anywhere from 8 to $10 a stick. Uh, uh, depending as to where you you, you live, uh, release date. I was shocked at this from my experience here in the Northeast because I don't do a lot of online forum stuff. Sure, uh, just because of number one bandwidth, as far as like my time. Time, yeah, right. But number two, like I guess we're kind of like a online forum type thing. So he geeks, Stoke here. geeks is, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like it's like I have enough activity from listeners emailing us and all that stuff there. Uh, so I, I was shocked that this came out in 2014, and it's finally getting to me now. So in other words, shop owners bought the previous San Latano stuff before they brought in this. Right. Like, do you not want to sell sticks? Because San Latano is a unique. Uh, it, it's unique to taste. Could be perceived as strong, depending on the profile. It's Nicaraguan. You're going to get the Nicaraguan. I'm talking about classic Nicaraguan. But this freaking Connecticut is, like, balanced awesome. Sweetness from a Connecticut, but a little bit of that pepper edge. You get that Connecticut creaminess yeah, coming out of a it? a little bit, but not, but not too much. You know what I mean? But not too much. But, I mean, it's, it's super tasty. Um, you know, y you get a good amount of pepper, and you also get – a little bit of like unexpecting type of nuances in there. I don't know if it's the undisclosed. Or I don't know if it's like yeah. a, if it's a Connecticut going against the Nicaraguan. So you're getting a little bit of yin yang. But you're looking at from a standpoint of of the wrapper, right? It's an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. So you're gonna have a lighter wrapper. Then you have Honduras, which will come across a little bit sweet, at least on my palate for the filler, with some undisclosed. Ni Nicaraguan stuff in there, and then your binder's Nicaraguan, so you're gonna get that pepper. And it, to me, it's like a toned down San Latano, hmm. but it's a sweet and tasty San, San Latano as, as well. As well, there. I mean, I, I would definitely, I, I would, I would give it a box split. You know, um, the, the, have you ever had one? I have not. See, because I, I have don't I walk out without something that too. So yeah, yeah. That's super tasty. It's the other great thing about watching Stogie Geeks, you learn about new sticks. Mm. I, I was like, oh, wow, like, is this a new line that San Antonio came out with? And then, uh, you know, uh, the work, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, all right. And I'm doing research. I'm like, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> and it, it's been around for that long, like, really. But, you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think maybe sometimes, you know, if you're buying, you're going to buy what? Their, cl their classic San Antonio, the regular one, right? 
go through that there and and not get this, but I don't know why you wouldn't include this into your repertoire because if you're a Connecticut smoker who likes true medium but wants to go a little bit edgier towards the medium but not total Nicaraguan crazy. Full bore, right? yeah. Full bolt. There you go. That's perfect work, right? Um, I, it, it's a great stick for you. So that was a San Latano Oval uh, Connecticut Petite Robusto. Box split. Box split. All right. Well, I'm going to close out with the uh, – I'm going to go to J.C. Newman. I had a, I have another J.C. Newman I tried. Okay. Um, I wanted to try one of their brick houses. Mm. And then I, I saw the mighty, mighty brick house. Okay. This is a beast of a stick. <laughs> this thing. So you're reviewing the mighty, mighty? The mighty, mighty. Okay. Take us to that. This thing was a monster. It's huge. <laughs> it says 60. I'm convinced. Uh, you know, I didn't actually measure it, but <laughs> – like 66. I'm convinced it's this thing 70. is bigger than 60. Like, I don't know where they got 60. I don't know what the hell kind of ruler they used. <laughs> this thing was a beast. Um, it's a Brazilian Maduro, Nicaraguan mm. uh, filler binder. Uh, very, like, intimidated almost by the size. The thing was huge. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Huge cigar, but very pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. with the flavors. Um you got, uh, I got the coffee in this one, a little bit of cedar with subtle uh, spiciness. What do you got it there? Um, yeah, I, I got coffee, cedar. Like, I, I like light spice. I don't like to be blasted with spice on a cigar. I like it to be light. So this was perfect with that. Um, there was a level of sweetness, and, and this was a long smoke. That's, that's the other thing. This is, you got to set aside 90 minutes to two hours to smoke this thing. That's how right. big it is. Um, so if you don't like, I, and just like we talked about trying different flavors, different types of wrappers and things, I also encourage people to try different sizes, different Vitolas, because you just, you get different flavors based on the different sizes. Um, so I, I tried this big beast of the Mighty Mighty uh, J.C. Newman, S shocked that the sweetness like just stayed throughout the entire experience. Mm. Um, just like, and very pleasant, like a very, ple not overwhelming was not an overwhelming sweetness at all. Just very, very pleasant. Not subtle, but it was there. Um, and then that coffee and cedar. The cedar almost diminished um, as you get through halfway through. Uh, but the, the coffee and the sweetness stayed, which is actually was a fantastic combination. V-cut because it's 60 or did you pull it? Total V-cut, okay. yeah. yeah. No, my God, a bullet. I don't know. If I could <laughs> Before <laughs> hours. Right, right, right. I, I need oxygen. I don't know if that would work. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I need EMTs on standby. <laughs> I don't know if that shit would work. <laughs> um, more definitely, it was. I would say it, they they label it as a full. Um, I would say it's more medium to full. Definitely closer to full, but it's. I would say it's more medium to full because of that, um, the sweetness that I got and um, that that coffee notes that came out. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, it was it was. I was very pleasantly surprised. Again, like so, in my reviews this week, two J C Newmans. Not super expensive. Yep. And uh, definitely, I would say this one is a fiver. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a fiver mm -hmm. all day. Yeah. The ranking that they're giving the Mighty Mighty is a six and uh, one fourth by 60. And Yeah, it says it's a 60, but yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Have you ever had the, the Brickhouse Teaser? No. Which is, yeah, it's so freaking tasty. It's a three and a half by 56. Really? Yeah, it's called a teaser. It's freaking hot. So you bullet cut that, and you just chill. Same, uh, same makeup, Nicaraguan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brick house, where are we? Yeah, brick house. Yeah, you have binded Nicaragua, and your wrapper uh, is genuine Connecticut, uh, U.S. Connecticut shade. Connecticut so, shade, okay. Yep, and it's Brazilian Araparaca. Okay. No, I haven't tried it. Or Araparaca. <laughs> we haven't decided that yet. I love listening to you just try to pronounce things. No, oh, <laughs> so <laughs> you and half the civilized story geeks world like that kid can't freaking pronounce it. How the heck did he get this gig? It's part of the fun of watching the show. You know what I mean? Like how the heck did he get? You know how? To, uh, but yeah. <laughs> have you ever had the brick house Maduro? No, that's actually so. I keep a list of must try, and I actually put that on my must try list after I had because I had never had any brick house. So now I want to try it because I love Maduro. So now I want to try the Maduro. Okay, don't leave without the Percos Maduro as well. 
add that for you uh, as well. Super cool stick. You have a story, too. I also love um, Opus X, Purple Rains, and, I mean, if we're going this route. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep talking on Story Geeks, we might go this route. I don't know. You know what I mean? Problem is we got we to gotta close out an episode. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, if you come on a board, then you what you do is you, you, you critique – borderline cigars, that realm around the cigars Close. you want. And there was, oh, Close. Close. you know what I mean? Oh, come on, get with the program. You know what I mean? That's like when I'm like, I'm sorry, Paul. The only thing I could pair, Paul's like, I think you should do a pairing. I'm like, good point. Only thing I could pair it with is Tatuaje Park Tenderloin. I did like six <laughs> episodes in a row. I'm like, that's actually how the F off section came about. Oh, that was that's, that's the story. That's the backstory, that's the backstory, to the backstory F-off behind section. the F off. It's been said multiple times. Yeah, it's the, that's the backstory because Paul and I went to an event. Um, I don't think I was with Security Weekly, but I was with Stogie Geeks, right? Paul and I went to an event together, and it was it was uh, uh, Pete was there. We had a freaking whole freaking Tatari Pork Tenderloin. Welcome to the show. Bing, bing, boom, and and he bought a bundle, and then I bought a bundle. And but I bought a bundle and took mine home because I wasn't employed here. You know what I mean? Sure. And so, but when I would come here, I would grab a pat I bought that one. So then Paul says, "Hey, we're gonna do. Uh, you know, I think you should do like a couple of tastings on the show. I think you know from emails we know we know what's kind of listening. People are want, interested, right? sure. So he's like, I think you should do a couple of tastings. It's okay, fine. I'll, I'm on it, no problem. And I would begin like three, I did like three episodes in a row. Like, I'm sorry, like, Paul, and I apologize. I can only pay this for, like, that's why I bought the end of the line. Like we that. show content. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, lo and behold, like, a week later, freaking the F off section was born. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Congratulations, because, you know, I used to say I, I'm raising the pirate flag and rating Paul's humidor, which I do anyway. So It's just it's, it's a nice know. humidor. It is a nice humor. It's very nice. <laughs> it's not organized, but it's nice. It's like treasure, right? Um, you get into. I, I, I think the story geeks listener, and we can wrap up with this. Would be into like the brick house story of there because, I, in my experience here on the show, I've always said super fan of the brick house marketing. Oh sure, yeah. Give us five dollars in a comfortable chair. Like they're right. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. And see that more of that. And, and that five dollars on a comfortable chair goes back to like when I owned the shop, so the nineties, right? Right, because you know it was all Scott Fishinato, fifty six K modem. You know what I mean? And like Brickhouse would just have a chair, like a one. Of, it's called actually a French back chair, right? You has the arms over here, and it goes back. And they would, and it was like plush red, but it was like weathered, right? And their slogan was, "With Brickhouse, give us five dollars on a comfortable chair, and that's all you need." Oh, wow. And it's like, dude, that's where you need to be. Like, for every freaking cigar company, that's the visual. And that's what actually got me into Brickhouse. I was like, you know, because, you know, we're, we're spending 8 to $11 on cigars as consumers. Yeah. Doing that there. I'm like, these guys over here with their $5 thing. Like, it's crazy. Let me try it. What is and, this? And, and then you're like. Shit, they're right. <laughs> like all you need is five dollars in a comfortable chair. That's they're, it. They're, they're not wrong. So hats off to them for whoever created that years ago. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, yeah, there is there so, is a little backstory. But you have the, a better story than mine. To the brick. <laughs> no, and I, I do. This is why I love Stogie Geeks because I geek out about this stuff. I don't just like the cigars. I love the um, the backstories behind them. And so as I was reading, so when I like a stick, I go read about it. Um, how did this come about? When did it come out? Um, and Brickhouse, it, I don't have one here, but it, it, there's actually a Brickhouse on the, on the band. Mm-hmm. And um, the story that of the Brickhouse stick is that uh, J.C. Newman in Cuba, um, they had the only home that was made of brick. And this is where people in the village would gather, drink, eat, hang out, smoke cigars. Um, and so the company named it after the brick house in the village that, you know, they, the family lived in, the Newman family lived in, mm-hmm. um, where the village would gather. And I, I just think the whole, like that whole thing about it was the community coming together and, and everyone was hanging out and it was probably tough times, but that time like they spent at the brick house was like a great time. Um, I just, I love those bags. So like the Yagua story, that's another great, it actually happens to be JC Newman as well. Um, but I love those backstories. Like the, so the Brickhouse story was pretty neat to me, um, and I totally geeked out about it when I read about yep. it. 
Yep. No, similar story. That's a little bit more here in the Northeast. You know the Jay Grotto? No. Po- the Jay Grotto? You never had a Jay Grotto? No, I've never had a Jay Grotto. It's Paul Joyle's stick. A what? Paul Joyle's stick? No, I haven't had it. All right, anyway, <laughs> from uh, when I had Cigar Club Radio, there's a local guy. His name is Paul Joyle. Has his own stick line. It's called, it's called the Jay Grotto. That's the name of the cigar, right? Um, different people made different parts of the cigar line. So when he went Connecticut to Docker Shade, different factory. Oh, wow. Right? And, like, got really wildly experimental. Because usually, you know, you go to Anessa Placencia, you go to Alec Bradley, and you say, I want to create a stick. This is where it's going to go. And, by the way, I want a medium, and I want a full, right. and whatever. And the same and you do your line. He just freaking, like, totally different roll of everything, right? So um, when I was asking him, like, okay, you came with a name Jay Grotto, right? Like, Grotto, G-R-O-T-T-O, right? Um, for those of you who are listening who are not from the Northeast, right? They're like, Grotto, you said it was too fast. Like, Grotto. Grotto, right? <laughs> uh, and I was like, asking him, like, well, how'd you come up with the name Jay Grotto? Well, my last name's Joel. And um, his word's not mine. His wife's, like, super into gardening and stuff like that. And uh, at, he owned a uh, prominent business here in, in, in Rhode Island. And um, after the business closed... Him and a bunch of close friends would go on their patio and and smoke a cigar, hang out, fire pit. And because his wife was all into, like, all that tricked-out gardening, yeah. it was like a grotto. And so his friends say, hey, would call him. They wouldn't text then, right? Because texting wasn't a thing. Like, hey, you know, can we, can we go down to the grotto? Or, or are we meeting at the grotto tonight? So it became the and grotto. And they would always call his backyard the grotto. And so he just named it Jay Grotto. Damn, and, I love and, that and shit. They, and That's a great go. story. Yeah, a lot of story geek stories that we have have that have that there. But yeah, that's and and again, it's like you know, um, super cool, super cool stories that are, how they're there. Yeah. Uh, an example that comes to mind is the six eight five Woodlawn by Christoph, right? Oh, I love that, that stick. That was that was Glenn Case's address, from, home address, yeah, from, from when he was a child. And so six eight five Woodlawn was where he lived. And that's where he named it, and and then away you go. You know what Great I mean? Great cigar, by the way. Yeah, I know it is a good cigar. You know, I, I'm force of strong on that one. Yeah. For those of you story geeks listeners, how I met Nelson. This is a true story. Right before we wrap up, I know I've been saying that for 20 minutes, right? Uh, I met Nelson, and he says, if you could walk into that humidor and pick out any stick for me, what should it be? And so I was like, oh, easy. And I freaking went in, and boom, here you go. And then I was telling the story. It was six eight five Woodlawn. Yep. And then we became friends. And I got hooked. I love that cigar. And you know. still talking to this guy. You know. Yeah. That's his strike one, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Well, uh, Drew, thank you for appearing out here. Definitely. Um, he's on such a super time crunch with this. Where, you know, story geeks, we might be. Uh, switching live dates, but that's not going to affect you if you catch us on the podcast. But um, on behalf of Drew, myself, and Nelson, we want to thank you for watching this episode of Stogie Geeks. Remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. All you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com, facebook.com forward slash stogiegeeks. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Joe Hozempa, H O Z E M P A. Email all of your complaints to Drew at stogiegeeks.com, and we will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>